The heart of LA, Valley Sports West, the heart of the fan. For some Angels baseball coming at you from Globe Life Field. Yeah, this is round four of this heavyweight matchup between two AL West rivals. I'm talking about the Angels and the Texas Rangers. And guess who is on the hill? Yeah, it is showtime for the series win. Angels looking to take three of four from the top team in the AL West. We'll give you the latest on the Zach Neto injury from yesterday. Eric Weston will join us live, and we'll talk about the Angels lineup against one of the very best in the American League, that being Nathan Avaldi, as you welcome me inside Studio 2 here in Santa Monica. Ken French, that is Bobby Valentine. This is a big one, a lot to like in this matchup. You know what? If you came into this one, Bobby V, you said, you know what? I'd enter this uh, last game of the series, leading it 2-1. to one. I would take that if I were the Angels. Oh, absolutely. I think they've been playing great baseball. Uh, you know, but Frenchie, a little different twist here tonight. You know, you have a very good pitcher pitching against your team. You have Otani saying he's fatigued and trying to work his way up. And you lost the little heart and soul of your team in Zach Neto. So this is a big game to get over those things and make it happen the right way. Yeah, we've been uh, discussing how this uh, Angels team is performing as far as feeling good about themselves in the clubhouse and how that has translated on the field. No one translating that better than one Shohei Otani. He has been leading the way as of late at the plate. But let's go back and show you what he did last time out on the mound. Yeah, that was back on June 9th taking on the Seattle Mariners, and of course, another AL West foe. He wasn't as sharp as we're used to seeing Shohei Otani, especially he was so good early on, Bobby V. He slowed down a little bit, but still was able to strike out six. He had to throw 97, though, over five innings. Yeah, you know, he's a great pitcher, and you expect him to be great every time out. But this year, he hasn't had the crispness nor the command uh, of all of his pitches that he usually goes out with you'll see a lot of the swings and misses are really balls that aren't on the plate he could usually hit the corner with every pitch and offensively French <laughs> <laughs> why not he hit a changeup for a single and then a changeup for a homer and that just for the metric watchers kind of keeps the changeup away from them they'll say oh boy he just hit one 400 feet on a changeup we better not throw him change-ups and that's good news for Otani. Triple shy of the cycle for the third time as a starting pitcher this season. Fourth time in that start against Seattle that he had at least three hits in a game as a starting pitcher. Only other guy to do that was Warren Spahn. He did it five times with the Milwaukee Braves back in 1958. Shohei Otani always got a smile on his face but you know what this is I like how you put this one. We said it was a heavyweight battle. You got a Valdi, who we're going to talk about him in a moment. He is probably the best pitcher in the American League. He is a favorite to start in that all-star game. You got Shohei Otani pitching huh. and hitting against the Valdi. You know that Shohei wants and embraces this challenge. Oh, that one, too. This, I think it's a special challenge for Shohei because Zach's not in the lineup and because there was a loss last night and because it's the Rangers and it's because of the opposing pitcher. Yes, that's the guy who probably will start the All-Star game that Shohei has been used to doing. He'll just hit probably in the All-Star game, and that will be cool with him. All right, we talked about the fatigue affecting him maybe on the mound right now. Of course, we all know what he did in the WBC. He had to ramp things up earlier than normal, and he has been pitching consistently every sixth day. But when it comes to the plate, no one is hotter in all of baseball than Shohei Otani. Bobby V riding an 11 game hitting streak and what he's been able to do during this 11 game hitting streak is truly incredible. 488, but when you talk about pitching overall as well, you know what, I wanna go back to what we talked about earlier. The first five starts of the season, he was a .64 ERA. Last eight starts, 488. 
E-R-A. What are some of the things that you're seeing a little bit different on the mound from Shohei Otani right now? Well, velocity and command, the things that, uh, you know, are his trademark. He, his fastball has to be working inside to these right-handed hitters tonight in order for his sweeper to be effective against them. And he's going to have to pull out the split if he's going to get these left-handers out. All right, uh, and Shohei Otani uh, leads the majors in opponents average, oh, by the way, at 172. He certainly is, uh, uh, you know, still one of the premier pitchers in the league. Don't get me wrong. I mean, we're just basically putting Shohei Otani against Shohei Otani standard, yeah. which uh, we do <laughs> yeah. often on the show. And oh, he's we're going, great. wait a second. This guy is absolutely incredible. All right, let's make that transition to, to the plate. Um, as I alluded to, an 11-game hitting streak, hitting 488 over the time with six homers, 14 RBI. He's got three homers his last three games. Oh, by the way, he hit the hardest opposite field home run in the stat cast era, 116 miles an hour off the plate. He is Shohei Otani. He's really swinging in. An epic 11 games. Understand, 46 extra base hits, or total bases, in 11 games. And that broke the record that Joey Votto held in from 2021. So, yeah, it's an epic time for Shohei at the plate. And what he's doing so dramatically and so astonishingly is driving the ball to the opposite field at distances that are unheard of. 11-game hitting streak, as I mentioned. 18-game hitting streak is the longest of his career. He did that at the end of last season. He is hitting epic home runs. As you see there, circled 21 homers. That's tops in the AL over Aaron Judge, who's injured with 19. Pete Alonzo has only one more. That is 22. He leads everybody in Major League Baseball. But uh, once again, he has been completely uh, incredible, a uh, unicorn S at the plate. But when it comes against Avaldi, two for 16, hitting 125 against Nathan Avaldi, you know he knows that number's there and he wants to improve upon it here today. Yeah, he'd like to get two more at bats against them and have Ivaldi out of there by his third time around. But he has to get the ball up. He's been hitting that ball up so well. Can't be chasing Ivaldi's uh, off speed stuff in the dirt. All right, 102 Ks. He's second in the American League. 21 homers. That's tops in the American League. So where does Shohei Otani stand when it comes to the American League All Star voting? Yeah, let's take a look. Here's the uh, up to date. Uh, stats, and you can see Shohei Otani at over 924,000. He leads the way in the AL. You look up to your right-hand corner there, you see Trotty behind Aaron Judge. Trout has been struggling at the plate. Uh, as of late, expect him to take off very soon. This is taking place at T-Mobile July 11th. Go to MLB.com to make your votes uh, and continue to vote as much as you can pop possibly can. MLB.com backslash vote phase one currently happening right now. Expect Shohei um, for sure to be there. And as you mentioned, probably not pitching, but he's looking forward to being the DH. Yeah, I don't think, it, I mean, they want him to pitch, but I think he'll shut it down for the throwing piece of that all-star game. But he'll be there with his bat. And again, you know, some fatigue, you hear about fatigue. You know, sometimes fatigue is a mental fatigue because you're not sure how long the race is. If anyone could overcome mental fatigue, it's Shohei Otani. All right, let's take our first time out here in Angels Live coming at you from Santa Monica. When we do come back, though, a lot more to talk about, including getting the latest on Zach Neto. Erica Wesson will join us live. Reed Detmers, has he turned a quarter back-to-back? -back? Tremendous starts. And, of course, let's keep taming this Rangers lineup that showed its ugly head hitting three homers last night. Entire channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen. And it's gone! With live look-ins to clutch at bats. A walk -off and players on the edge of making history. This could be it! 62! It's the best seat in the house at every ballpark. All commercial free. Can you believe it? MLB Network Strike Zone. Wednesdays and Fridays, all season long.
up with every team on MLB Network wherever you go. Just download the MLB app, click MLB Network, and sign in with your TV provider info. Then watch MLB Network all day, every day, your way. This is Mookie Betts. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Mookie Betts plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo. Helping players play harder on MLB Network. Uh, here's what Zach Neto can bring to the table. We, need, we know what he can do with a glove. How about with the bat? Zach Neto on Tuesday going yard, giving the Angels a little cushion on that lead late in the ninth inning. Zach Neto coming around. Of course, he was put on the Cavuto. He has been playing so well for the Angels. But unfortunately, Zach Neto not in the lineup here tonight in Arlington. As we welcome you back inside our Santa Monica studios, Ken French. That is Bobby Valentine. For more on Zach Neto, we go out to Arlington where Erica Weston standing by. Erica, Zach, we know, had to leave the game the first inning, called it a cramp. What is the latest on Zach Neto after that MRI? Yeah, he, would ha he was having an MRI this morning, getting some images after leaving the game early last night. It was really early on in the game last night. In fact, he said it happened on a warm-up throw in between innings, so it must have been in between uh, inning halves in the first. So that was uh, pretty early on last night, again, on a warm-up throw. Got the images this morning, and it is an oblique strain for Zach Neto, so they placed him on the IL for the time being. Still not real clear as far as the severity or the timeline Zach certainly doesn't t seem too overly concerned with it so in the meantime Andrew Velasquez has been recalled he is here he is starting tonight as well uh, so he also recently is recovering from an oblique injury as well in fact he literally just got back after spending six weeks on the IL down in the minors with an oblique injury so we talked to both Zach Neto and Andrew Velasquez earlier today about the injury and squid getting the call not much. No, I feel feel good. I woke up uh, pretty good this morning. Um, so just going to take it day by day now and, you know, just uh, keep going, getting better, and try to get out there as quick as possible. Do they give you any sort of timeline on, on obviously, there's different severity levels of this and maybe how long you might be out? Uh, they didn't give me a time, but, um, you know, as, as long as I feel comfortable enough to go out there and, you know, be the same way I was, then that's, that's how long it will take. You mentioned it feels a little better already, you think? <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling way better. Uh, you know, I woke up a little sore this morning, but, um, you know, pain level has gone down, and I'm you know, just going to try to keep going and, you know, feel better every day, hopefully. Was it definitely a, an IL consideration, or was there even a conversation that you would sit a couple days? Um, I have no idea. I, walk, I walked in there with Frosty, and, um, you know, he just told me, that uh, it got it was enough to put me on the IL. So um, you know, I'm trusting him, and you know, I trust him to get me get me feeling even better than I was. It's a quick turnaround. I just played two games and then got the call. So um, feel feel for Neto. You know, I had the same kind of injury, so I know how bad that feels early on. But um, he was putting together a rookie of the year campaign. I thought so. It's fun to watch him. So, but he'll be back. We just we just chatted up and. Uh, just kind of told them what it was like for me. I know Moore's doing the same thing too, so. So a lot of transactions today. Neto to the IL squid is here. Colton Ingram also with the call. When we see him, that will be his major league debut. Jimmy Herget was optioned back down to AAA. Um, a lot of questions as to why David Fletcher wasn't the call up and, and it was Andrew Velasquez instead. He's not on the 40-man roster for now. Phil Nevin said they wanted to keep the defense the same as it would be with Neto in there. We know how good Squid was last year with defense at the shortstop position. Also, David Fletcher is not currently with the team. He's on the bereavement list down there in AAA dealing with a family emergency. For, so for the meantime, Squid is here. He's starting tonight. Brandon Drury also serving his one-game suspension tonight. Gio Urshela is back after missing the last two with that back tightness he is starting tonight at first base guys Eric you didn't have any news for us we appreciate that that you, I mean <laughs> my goodness gracious thank you so much for all the information um, have a great show here tonight in Arlington and I want to ask you manager Bobby V you got a young man uh, eager to get out there and Zach Neto of course you got to be careful he's gonna say yeah I feel pretty good skip get me out there how, how do you have to be careful and keep the reins on this young man to make sure he is healed before he goes back out to shortstop
Well, it's a very capable training staff, and as a manager, you listen to the training staff, and there's always a day after the day that they see, think they're ready that you actually put them in there. Um, you know, but the loss of, loss of him for a week or 11 days or two weeks is going to be a challenge to this group. This group has been building together with him as an integral part of it, and it's going to be interesting how they move forward. All right, uh, let's transition to Reed Detmer. Certainly a positive from a tough loss last night. Back-to-back -back great outings. He was coming off his first win. He pitched well enough last night for a win. I mean, this uh, young man went into the, uh, what, the sixth inning. He had 65 pitches. My goodness, he was rolling against the top offense in all of baseball. Yeah, and 47 through four innings, he was getting them to swing early at pitches that were very much in the zone, but very good, high quality pitches, none of them down the middle. So when you can throw a breaking ball that's on the corner, and then you can get them to swing and fish at the slider in the dirt, and look at a fastball away because they're looking change up and then throw a curveball, that becomes a strikeout in your uh, in your box score. It's terrific. And then to get out there in the sixth inning and have a line tra drive in a tie ball game one to one and to worry about the runner stealing ba the base and kind of quickening uh your move and walking the batter and then after a strikeout walking another batter with a big breaking ball now having a situation bases loaded one out and the meat of their order coming up both being right handers both of them went down on strikes, and that's a big box checked off right there. Getting through the sixth inning and giving your team a chance to win. All three outs coming on the strikeout, but look at the slider out of the zone. Something you like to see as far as swing and misses. As long as you're throwing it in the zone early, you'll get him to chase it in the, out of the zone late, and that's what he was doing. Uh, two from the curve, four from the four seam, of course, three from the slider. The sixth inning, or should I say the third time around, has been a struggle for Reed Detmers. Here he is last night talking about getting out of that tough sixth inning. Obviously, that's where I've been struggling at all year. Um, it was finally nice to get out of an inning, uh, get out of a jam. Um, yeah, I was just telling myself one pitch at a time and don't give anything to hit. So um, just keep the ball down and hopefully I was looking for a ground out. Uh, just put, have something put in play. Um, just minimize the damage, but I mean, I'll take two strikeouts. Yeah, Phil Nevin said, you know what? Heading into the six, he had 65 pitches. Let him throw 31 to get out of the six. Good stuff there, but you know what? Not good stuff when he talked about the Rangers' power. They showed it last night. Sunday, MLB Network celebrates Juneteenth. Join Harold Reynolds, Mookie Betts, and some of the game's biggest names for a look at the business of baseball through the eyes of African-American players. MLB Tonight, a conversation Sunday at 7 Eastern on MLB Network. Wake up to baseball's biggest stories. Robert Flores wearing tweed. Wake up to big name guests. Very special guests hanging out on the crush red velvet. This show is tough to get ready for. And wake up to a whole lot of fun. Wearing a robe holding a wooden phone. Oh. MLB Central. It is absolutely hilarious. Oh. The show baseball fans and baseball players wake up to. Show's starting to pick up. I love the energy. I love the unexpected performances. Weekday mornings on MLB Networks. We'll have a little fun and we'll laugh.
Rangers game four of a four game series. They've taken two of three thus far looking for the series win as that uh, gentleman looks for a jersey with I don't know what kind of logo on it to take home there. Hey, welcome inside our Santa Monica Studios, Ken French. That is Bobby V. If you're an Angels fan, you want Shohei Otani on the hill against this Rangers team to take home a series win. That's exactly what you are getting here today. The Rangers come into this series, best offense in all of baseball. Bobby V, we saw it last night, three homers as part of a nine hit attack. Um, but Shohei Otani is one of those guys who is crafty in a sense where you don't know what sequence he is gonna throw on a given night. And he's gonna have to be very creative here this evening. Yeah, I think that he'll be very educated. He studies uh, the opposition. He knows what works for him against them. And now he just has to make his pitches. There's no secret that this is a uh, mano y mano. When he's pitching, you have to be ready because he has a plan to get you out. Jonah Heim been very good against uh, Otani, hitting 429, six for his last 14. Nathan Lowe has been good as well, 375, six for his last 16 against one Shohei Otani. And you can bet Otani knows very well that those guys have found success. On the other end of the ledger, Nathan Avaldi. Yeah, what a pickup he has been for this Texas Rangers team. All he has done is win his last eight, or over his last 10 starts, he is 8-0 and oh with a 1.65 ERA. Bobby, we mentioned he's got to be one of the top, if not the top, pitcher in the American League. On a great stretch right now, throwing all, his, all of his pitches for strikes, getting early outs, not extending himself early in the game. He's a good fielder. And his stuff is outstanding. Look, his whip is less than one. That means when you get somebody on, you better advance them and score them in a hurry because there's not going to be a lot of traffic during the night. He has 13 scoreless innings against the Angels this season, including eight shutout frames the last time he faced the Angels back on May the 6th. A 10-1 Rangers win. Why haven't the Angels hitters been successful against Nathan Avaldi. Oh, he's real good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, when, when good pitchers are making pitches in their spots, it's hard to make a living as a hitter. And you have to hope that he moves that ball, a few of his sliders and a few of his fastballs that could get up to over 98 miles an hour, hope they get toward the middle of the plate. When they do, you have a chance, but that stuff on the corners that he throws is almost unhittable. Yeah, and there's a different intensity. I think you and I both recognize it, especially with Shohei Otani with the bat flip. I mean, what is that? I mean, this guy has an edge that we've seen as well. Um, this is kind of a playoff atmosphere right now with these two teams. You can sense it. So as far as I'm concerned, throw out those last two starts from Evaldi. It's going to be a different game here tonight. Let's take one more time out here on the program. That's what I say. When we do come back, though, we're going to take a look at the lineups and get you set for the series finale coming at you from Arlington. Hey fans, I'm breaking down MLB Play. I think they're the best MLB games. Now my personal favorite, Beat the Streak. Pick who you'll think will get a hit building your own streak. It's all on you, baby. You can win 5.6 million bucks. The streak's alive! Next up, Pickle. Guess the player in the fewest number of tries. Got him! And there's other games like Bingo, a race to be first. Bingo! MLB Play. Great games, great prizes, and it's all free. No purchase necessary. Restrictions apply. See official rules and enter at MLB.com backslash play. Oh yeah! It's the Modern Baseball Show for the modern baseball fan. Off Base, with interviews and coverage of baseball's hottest stars. I've done a couple interviews in my life. This probably is the most fun I've ever been a part of. Only on MLB Network.
Edmonton, which should be a good one here. The season finale, their series finale, seems like the season finale, the way this uh, series has gone. The four-game series comes to an end tonight between the Angels and the Rangers. Here is a lineup that uh, Phil Nevin will put out on the field here tonight. As I mentioned, uh, no Drury. He's serving the suspension. No Hunter Renfro here tonight. You got Squid in the lineup at eight. You got Renjifo playing second base, and Moniak will be in right field. Yeah, you know, Chad Wallach is doing a great job, gets a tough call against a tough right-hander tonight, and uh, Matt Dice is on in there. Interesting lineup for sure. All right, let's take a look at the Rangers lineup. That'll be uh, out on the field for Bruce Bochy here tonight. Uh, Semyon and Seeger, we know how dangerous they are. Seeger has reached base safely in 15 of 24, and uh, Leody Tavares, he had a homer last night. He has reached base safely in 12 of the last 15. Again, a very potent lineup for Shohei Otani. Yeah, Shohei's going to have to work on those left-handers, and you see they threw those basically, you know, seven guys hitting from the left side, so the split's going to be important. All right, it's about time for round four of this AOS matchup. Halo's going for the series win. It's Shohei Day from Arlington next. Jeremy Peña, the world champion shortstop with movie star presencia. Every Dominican wants to grow up and play baseball, bro. When I was 13, I was like, the plan is to get to the big leagues. I love seeing young Dominicans win, bro, because I'm an old Dominican. You know that Dominicans que juega, todo el mundo juega pelota. Pelota, claro. I was just looking forward to playing again, man. This is going to be a fun year. Salud. A la vida, más chula. Salud, hermano. Keep up with every team on MLB Network wherever you go. Just download the MLB app, click MLB Network, and sign in with your TV provider info. Then watch MLB Network all day, every day, your way. Imagine an entire channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen. It's gone! With live look-ins to clutch at bats. A walk-off flare! And players on the edge of making history. This could be it! 62! It's the best seat in the house at every ballpark. All commercial free. Can you believe it? MLB Network Strike Zone. Wednesdays and Fridays, all season long. Valley Sports West, the heart of the fan. Summer in the American League West means one thing. It's unicorn season. It's this one well, left center field, pretty deep. This one's going to go a long way. The game is tied. Shohei Otani covered it all right. Otani with the drive, left field, hit well. This ball is deep. Jankowski's back, and it's gone. Shohei. Long 
drive, left center field, way back. Shohei Otani starts tomorrow. Tonight he cracks a home run. Showtime. What we've seen this week is the stuff of legend. The mythical Shohei Otani gallops to the mound and the plate. Today we get a chance to see Otani go full unicorn. the scene of a full unicorn tonight plus a great pitching matchup the valley of this four game series the Los Angeles Angels against the Texas Rangers alongside Mark Gubas I'm Wayne Randazzo and Gubi as Shohei goes up against Nathan Evaldi tonight well Shohei's gonna have to pull on the full show to get a win Wayne this is gonna be a lot of fun here tonight chance to win a series against the Rangers the first place Rangers the Angels are playing very very good and Shohei Otani has done about everything possible to help this team win. 21 home runs, which is tops in the American League. We see it on display. We're already here with three home runs here in Texas, and he has crushed the baseball. On the mound, second in the American League in strikeouts with 102 for Shohei Otani. You're going to need that good slider, good sweeper, and fastball going against this powerful lineup for the Rangers. And then Shohei Otani with the speed. 10 stolen base. That's 15th best in the majors. Number one as far as a designated hitter in baseball so Shohei Otani's been doing it on the power the fastball and the speed he's going to need to do so again here tonight he certainly will because there's a tough opponent on the mound for Texas tonight Nathan Evaldi has been outstanding this year a certain all-star he's become the ace of this Rangers staff I mean his fastball has been every bit as hard and firm as Shohei Otani's but his splitter's been really good when you go back really to his last 10 starts 8-0 with an ERA 1.65 he threw the ball really really well against the Angels in eight shutout innings so you're going to have to try to bring that fastball up same thing with the splitter and make some good contact because he'll provide the power to be able to drive the ball well with a win the Angels can take three out of four in this series gain a couple of games on the first place Texas Rangers by doing so Shohei against Nathan Evaldi a Texas size showdown game four of this series coming up in just a moment We love going to games, but good seats get pricey, so we use Game Time. Game Time tracks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last-minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last-minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. Take control of your health by boosting your force field, the immune system. With the Aura Ring, you can listen to your body's signals and raise your defenses. Aura tells you when your temperature is higher than normal how to improve your sleep, or if your heart rate shows signs of stress, so you can decide to push yourself or to lie low. Live smarter, stronger, healthier with the Aura Ring. Let's talk about ED. As you get a little older, things tend to work a little differently. I felt shame, embarrassment, guilt. Like something had been knocked out from underneath me. What Hims does is says, hey, look, don't worry about it. We got this part covered, 100% online. The whole process was very discreet. It made me feel like I'm a rock star. This product has changed my life. When it kicked in, I said, yeah, I'm back. I remember this feeling. Get started today at 4 
Angels to win this series. They took the first two Shohei Otani's two home runs on Monday night, including the go-ahead blast in extra innings, a 12-inning thriller as the Angels won game one of this series against Texas 9-6. On Tuesday night, the Angels bounced back for another come-from-behind victory. Hunter Renfro with a two-run homer the other way. Zach Denno added a two-run shot late. The Angels won the second game 7-3. Last night, though, the Rangers were able to take the long ball into their favor. Back-to-back -back homers from Marcus Simeon and Corey Seager for the first time this year as Texas put up three runs in the seventh and two in the eighth for a 6-3 win. And now we get to the finale of this four-game set. Angels trying to win three out of four against the first-place team in their division on the road. And they have the ace of their staff on the mound tonight to do it as Shohei Otani goes up against Nathan Evaldi. Gooby, it's been an entertaining series and no reason to expect that this one won't be either. I'll tell you what, they battle, both teams have battled all the way through the first three games with these two guys on the mound today. And these lineups and depth in the lineup for both teams, this is going to be a lot of fun to see. Give the lineup for the Angels brought to you by Simpson Chevy. Shohei Otani with his out of this world. Weighted runs created plus 165 for the year. Mike Trout batting third. Mickey Moniak continues to do well. You see Gio Urshela is back. And you see Andrew Velasquez up from AAA. Zach Neto is on the IL. An oblique strain. So the Angels will be without their star rookie shortstop for the time being. It's Velasquez getting the start at shortstop tonight. As the Rangers take the field, Nathan Evaldi has been outstanding for Texas. Yes, they got a whip of 0.98. That's walks and hits per innings pitch. He's been outstanding so far. Go to's, though, for the Angels have success against Evaldi tonight. They didn't have success against the May, but tonight is a different day. Ready to attack the first pitch. He's had a batting average of 429 at a home run on that first pitch put in play. And make sure the split is elevated. Do not chase that split when it starts at the knees because it's going to be well below the strike zone. And he gets a lot of strikeouts with that pitch. 33.7 whiff percentage. And the defense behind Evaldi today. You got Tavares out in center field. He can cover a lot of ground. He plays a deep center field but comes in on the baseball. Zinkowski out in left. Garcia with that great throwing arm out in right field. Smith, Seeger, Simeon, and Lowe at first base. And Jonah Hine behind the plate for Nathan Evaldi tonight. Can't help but notice the blue background on that defensive graphic. The blue logo for the Texas Rangers who are wearing red hats tonight. Red hats on the blue team. I mean, can somebody help me out here? <laughs> oh, once we sold that weight, I knew that was going to be a conversation. <laughs> Red sleeves even as Evaldi finishes his warm-up tosses. And then they're, they're a blue team. They got to stop with this red stuff. The Angels are a red team. <laughs> Trying to confuse everybody. <laughs> this is what Evaldi will throw here today. Take a look at our stack cast at 3D powered by Google Cloud. A good four-seam fastball at 38%. Splitter at 27 Cutter at 19, curveball 13%, slide about 3%. His splitter has been outstanding. See that batting average against it, 174. It's 212. This is curveball also. As they say on the PA before the games here, it's baseball time in Texas. And the first pitch, Taylor Ward lifts it toward the right field corner. Long run at Dolis Garcia. That ball is foul. As it bounces into the corner just next to that 326 sign down the right field line. You can see that approach when you have and you read about those numbers being so successful on the first pitch. 14 for 33 for batters when he put that first pitch in play against Baldy. To find your ways to get to Nathan Evaldi because he has been tough to get to over the course of this season. Signing just a two-year deal with the Texas Rangers for $34 million. And for all the big money contracts that were given out in the offseason, for all the big names that signed, now this is a guy who can be a big game pitcher and has certainly been on the big stage before. Maybe an under-the-radar free agent as he signed a fairly small deal with Texas. As you can see, he gets real good balance over the pitch and rubber brings the glove over the head. You don't see that too often anymore. He stays balanced and he drives towards the plate very effectively. And the absence of Jacob DeGrom, which will now be an extended absence, Nathan Evaldi has catapulted himself to be the ace of this staff for the Rangers, which they desperately need. 
Taylor Ward though has other ideas a line drive base hit starts the night for the Angels. Lead off man on and out tonight's starting pitcher for the Angels Shohei Otani. Boy and he's been unbelievable on days he has pitched and swung the bat. 392 batting average on base percent of 466 in OPS of 1113 Shohei Otani has crushed it. He's been on the mound and also three different times almost hit for the cycle when he's been pitching. That's still mind boggling when you keep thinking that it's it's unreal. Two of a those couple times real close to it. Yeah, two of say two of those three times he got something close to the hit that he needed in his final at bat. His average up to 299 now for the year. He's on an 11 game hitting streak which is tied for the second longest of his major league career. He has a 1404 OPS in the month of June. And you can tell how patient he has been he's seeing the baseball well he's working walks. It's a cutter in off the plate. And no Shohei will be swinging 3-0. It's anywhere near the zone. Had a three hit game in his last start on the mound, which was against Seattle last Friday. Valdi just pumps that one in at 96. Shohei let it go by, and it's three and one. in there as well and it's a full count three balls two strikes show has had four games already this year as a starting pitcher with three or more hits that hasn't been done since Hall of Famer Warren Spahn in 1958 for the Milwaukee Braves Give him a three one splitter you might see that again it's three and two now and Otani laces one toward the left field line and is slicing foul Back to that again. You got to feel real comfortable be able to throw that close enough to the strike zone on a full count, especially when you have Mike Trout waiting on deck. That's low ball four. So the Angels' first two men get on base. Taylor Ward a base hit Shohei Otani a base on balls and now the table set for Mike Trout. And a walk for Shohei he has been extremely patient here in this series. It's his fifth walk. Active on base streak of 19 consecutive games to go with his 11 game hitting streak. And now ball one to Mike Trout you know he's been drawing walks lately too. Trout has hit Evaldi pretty well. Seven for 21. He's not homered off him yet. Two balls and no strikes. Evaldi trying to find his way early. And now the catcher Jonah Heim goes to the mound. He has not been susceptible to first inning trouble. He's hardly been susceptible to trouble at all. He's only given up two first inning runs this season. And over his last 10 starts, Evaldi hasn't lost a 165 ERA in that time. He's gone 8 and 0, and he's trying to be the first Rangers pitcher to win 10 games before the All Star break since Lance Lynn did it in 2019. No Ranger ever has won 10 games within his first 14 starts of a season. Evaldi can do that tonight. That's how good he's been. Trot should get a fastball here. He did, and he gets a high fly ball to center field. Not carrying though as Tavares makes the catch. Taylor Ward tags and advances to third base. Shohei holds up at first as Trout flies out to straightaway center field. He's got underneath that as a fastball and Trout. You can see even going back to the dugout, that was his pitch. He's a little frustrated on that one. He had a good pitch to drive, just got underneath it. Tim's right there to say, hey, listen, you're just off on that one. That was a pretty good swing underneath it. 
Here's Anthony Rendon. Only a couple of hits for Rendon since coming off the IL. And he was going good right before the injury. These were his best moments with men on base. These were the times where he sees and observes the way the infield is playing against him. He just punches that ball right to that right side of the infield and gets that hit through that vacant spot. Shelly Otani has to be held on, so a lot of room on that right side. Two balls, no strikes on Rendon. Thank you, Valdi. Rendon is from Texas. He's from Houston. Ethan Evaldi went to high school in Alvin, Texas, the same high school that Nolan Ryan went to. In fact, Nolan Ryan and Nathan Evaldi are the only players out of Alvin High School to make the big leagues. That's two pretty good players, though. <laughs> There's Nolan's number 34 in red here at Globe Life Field. Meanwhile, Evaldi, half a Nolan Ryan. He wears number 17. I think he's just a big Shohei fan. <laughs> As we all are. Yeah. Everybody but the pitcher he's facing in that particular moment. Ooh, and don't get hit. It's the last thing the Angels need right now is someone else to get bitten by the injury bug. It's been going around lately. Zach Neto placed on the IL today. That's right on the wrist hand area. So he doesn't wear a lot of protection, really any, on that hand except for the batting glove. Ooh, that's right at his wrist. While the bases are loaded, once Swindon takes his base, he's smiling at least. Not sure Phil Nevin is right now, considering they have some players out. I mean, Neto was a big blow. That's that's something that they're certainly going to feel. Velasquez has come up to at least maintain the defensive portion of it, but Neto was really blossoming into a guy who could yes. be both a great defender and a big part of the lineup. Well, his numbers he had been putting up. Outstanding numbers for Zach Neto. Keep in mind, too, the Angels don't have Brandon Drury tonight, so it's important for Rendon to stay in this game. Drury is serving the one-game suspension he was given for the contact he made with the home plate umpire on Monday night, arguing balls and strikes. So the Angels are a man short. You don't get to replace a suspended player. So they're playing with 25 tonight. Here's Urshela. It's been a few days since we've seen Urshela as he's been out because of some back tightness. Yeah, good numbers in his career versus Evaldi. Six for 18. That's 333, including a home run and a couple RBIs. He's trying to get something deep enough in the air to get that first run across, if not more. How's that one at home plate, and it's 0-2. Rochella has not started a game since Saturday. He did play a couple of innings on Monday night. Rivaldi's a strikeout pitcher. He's ahead 0 2. Rochella taps the ball to the right side. Could be a double play ball. Out at second. And out at first, a double play. And Rochella slow to get up as this inning comes to an end. Attention cancer victims who used the weed killer Roundup. A federal jury unanimously found that Monsanto's popular weed killer Roundup was a substantial factor in causing cancer. You may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you or someone you love used Roundup and were diagnosed with cancer, call the number on your screen now. Don't wait. There may be time deadlines to file a claim. Call 800-892-7300. That's 800-892-7300. At Warby Parker, we believe in vision for all. Not just in the sense that we offer lots of frame styles and sizes, because we do. Or that we have glasses, sunglasses, contacts, and eye exams. There's also that. But because we believe everyone has the right to see. So for every pair sold, a pair of glasses is distributed to someone in need. Try five pairs for free 
or visit a nearby store. Get to the bottom of the first or Shella doing all he could to beat out a play at first trying to break up what was an inning ending double play. He just lunged at the base and even that and when he got by the base he stumbled afterward. And that stumble looked like that was more straightened than, that leg yeah. out. So everything he can to stay in this game. Well, Shella is the first baseman so. He's in that spot where he's supposed to be playing defensively as he tries to talk his way into this game. I haven't seen anybody come out of the dugout. With the only person that could really is Jared Walsh that could play first base. But it looks like when Epo is bringing Rochella his cap and his mitt and going to give it a go. Shell is going to stay in and Shohei Otani will take his warm up tosses to get ready for the bottom of the first as he makes the start tonight. Yeah the difference uh, usually when you see Shohei warming up in between innings so he'll just flip the baseball in there but it was a long time in between for Shohei to throw that first pitch warming up. I go to for Shohei to have an outstanding game here tonight against this Rangers team is ride that fastball upper zone. He's been getting a lot of swing and misses with his four seam fastball and then become unpredictable again when they're looking maybe for that sweeper drop that curveball in there go back to using a splitter use that four seam fastball just a few more times become the creative one all over again we saw Shohei early in the season struggle with his control he did walk five in his last start against Seattle so we take a look at the Mariners or rather the Rangers lineup tonight As their weighted runs created plus jumps off the page still league average at 100 and many hitters well above it including Corey Seager who's been Almost impossible to get out lately. Seeger homered last night as the Rangers won for the first time in this series. Jankowski and Smith at the bottom of the order. Josh Young is not in the lineup. Neither is Ezekiel Duran for Texas. And the defense behind Shohei today. Andrew Velasquez back at shortstop here tonight. And an 879 fielding percentage last year. Turned 44 double plays after the door. Next to him. You got Renifo at second, or Shell at back and staying in the game at first base, Wallet behind the plate, and the outfield, Ward, Trout, and Mickey Moniak, who's been unbelievable in the outfield no matter where he has played. In left, center, and right, has made unbelievable plays in the outfield, Mickey Moniak. And Shohei ready to go on the mound as Marcus Simeon leads off the bottom of the first. Simeon was 0 for his first 13 to start this series, and then had a base hit and a two run homer last night, kept one just fair. Down the left field line against Jimmy Hargett, who was sent back to Triple A today. The Angels called up lefty Colton Ingram, who could make his major league debut either tonight or this weekend when the team goes to Kansas City. Ingram, a good story, and we'll tell you more about that when he enters a game. And ball one strike on Simeon. And right away, a couple fastballs for Shohei Otani. It's good to see on the last start against the Mariners came out of the gate with a couple of cutters. Fell behind early and ended up walking five and in five innings. Another fastball but it's off the plate and it's two balls and a strike on Simeon. Simeon really the first part of the first three games very aggressive early and then his last two at bats were solid for him now a little more patient at the plate. Fastballs, but only one strike. As Otani falls behind Marcus Simeon. It's going to be pretty close with the pitch time, too. And another leadoff walk. 
Take a look at the separation of the pitches thrown by Shohei Otani this season. Take a look at our StatCast 3D power by Google Cloud. Especially when you look at his curveballs compared to his four-seam fastball. You're talking about 11 and a half feet, 97.1 with his four-seamer. Sinker is about 94.7. Cutter still firm at about 90. Same thing, 89 with his splitter. Corey Seager fouls one off. You know he's swinging the bat on what first pitch for Corey Seager. I think there's many people in the game of baseball that swing at the first pitch more often than Corey Seager, and, and he does a lot of damage with that first pitch, as we saw last night. Tani ahead. The ball's two strikes on Seager. We talked recently about that sweeper for Shohei resulting in some home runs largely they have come with a man on base. All seven of the home runs Otani's given up on the sweeper have been with a man on. One ball two strikes on Seager. 99 mile an hour fastball 0 2. There's a time where it was almost automatic for Shohei he would go to a splitter. 0 oh, 2 or with two strikes. Seeger lines this one to center. Trout started in, now backs up and gets to it. And Simeon returns to first after his leadoff walk, the seventh time this year that Shohei has walked the first batter of the game. And most really good pitchers you see from the beginning of MLB, they struggle to find command that first inning. That set the difference between the bullpen mound, the game mound before you settle in and then it start to dominate. So far, four seamers and cutters so far for Shohei. Here's Nathaniel Lowe. Lowe looks at a strike. Lowe's been striking out a whole lot lately. Shohei gets ahead of him, no balls and two strikes. Lowe was off yesterday at an opposite field home run. In the game on Tuesday night, Nathaniel Lowe is among the major league leaders in hits to the opposite field over the last couple of years. So now to add the series here. 100 mile an hour fastball. So that's twice now Shohei is throwing a fastball four seamer 0 2. Once to Seeger, now here to Lowe. He's establishing in his fastball early. If he goes a pattern, this will be a cutter. And he's a backdoor sweeper that didn't come over the plate. And it's two balls, two strikes on Nathaniel Lowe. That's the first sweeper. That Shohei has thrown. I'll tell you what, that was a real smart pitch there, too. There's no way you're thinking about swinging at that. He had him frozen, but he didn't quite get the outside corner, though. Count goes full, and it's three and two on low. And Olis Garcia on deck. I believe he might be on the move here, Simeon. Potential strike him out, throw him out. Swing and a miss. Well, they got the strikeout. Simeon didn't run, so no chance for the throw out. But Shohei has his first strikeout of the night. It's another four seam fastball for Shohei. His balance has been good. Times maybe overthrown a little bit as four seam fastball, but impressive there. We've been saying here. And you have especially over the last few starts. He'll throw that fastball more. You, you got a hundred in there. And when you look at what his whiff percentage on his four seam fastball, 33.6%. I mean, that is a high whiff, whiff percentage on a fastball. Two balls, no strikes. Uh, Shohei falls behind Adolis Garcia. Tani's fastball has been one of the hardest pitches to connect with in the big leagues this year. A 
Garcia unable to connect on that one, and it's two balls, one strike. You know that's a good fastball, Wayne. It's a fastball count. Even though we say how many times you get a fastball and a fastball count, well, that was that was 97. It got to buy him upstairs. That's how impressive it has been so far. Into the sweeper, got a weak swing, and it's two balls, two strikes on Adolis Garcia. 54 runs batted in for Garcia that is still the most on the Rangers one ahead of Marcus Simeon. He has not had an RBI in this series. That fastball in on his hands and Garcia was able to fight it off. We've seen some swings and misses up in that zone to Garcia throughout this series. The cutter and it's a full count. Now Simeon definitely will be running with the count three and two and two outs in the inning. And a foul ball to right. And Twenty-two pitches in the inning. Shohei again has a bit of a laboring start in terms of his pitch count. He threw 97 pitches in only five innings his last start. We have not seen him work into the seventh inning since May 15th. He usually gets on a roll after the first inning or so. We'll start getting more and more ground balls and usually able to on quicker, earlier counts. So just trying to get through this first inning and get on a roll. Garcia just barely stays alive on the 3 2 sweepers. Another 3 2 count coming. And Simeon gets his sprint work in going between first and second. First time through the order this year. Opponents just 9 for 99 against Shohei. Another foul with Olis Garcia racking up the pitches. Fouling off several in this at bat. And he's seen a lot of fastballs in this series. No matter who is on the mound. Time where he would chase breaking balls and slide those curveballs well off the outside part of the plate. He's been susceptible to fastballs up and in. This will be the tenth pitch of the at bat to Garcia. Pops it up, shallow left center, out goes Velasquez, in comes Trout. Velasquez chasing, can't reach it. Taylor Ward has to get it in quickly. As Simeon was running on the pitch, he ends up at third. Adolis Garcia just muscled that ball in a good spot. Velasquez got close, but couldn't quite reach it. It's a base hit. Just jammed him on that sweeper inside. It's strong enough to be able to get it. Almost got back to and got to that baseball. And Velasquez. And fortunately enough, Taylor Ward right there. Get that baseball in quick because Simeon was thinking about going all the way around. So now Jonah Heim, who has been the Rangers' best hitter with runners in scoring position. Heim has 46 runs batted in. 42 of those have come with runners in scoring position. And good numbers in his career against Shohei. Six for 14 for the home run, that being the grand slam. I'm almost thinking if you're Taylor Ward to left field, be aware. He's hit a number of baseballs against Shohei. Just that flare out the left field. So you've got to be ready to come in on a fly ball. He just missed the outside corner. Now two balls, one strike. It has been. A 28 pitch inning now for Otani. Nothing has crossed the board yet. A whole lot of pitches have been surrendered in this inning. Number 29 
It'll be a 2-1 to Jonah Heim. And it's ball three. Leody Tavares on deck. Heim pops it up on the infield. Shohei will get out of the inning. It took 30 pitches, but he hangs a zero in the bottom of the first. If sports fans built a streaming service. Uh, what's going on? I think we found a way to stop fans from destroying their TVs when their teams lose. How's it work? Hey, Charlie. Philly lost. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to put you on hold for just one second. Okay. <laughs> Water splashing around this one. The Bob Ross channel. It's freaking genius. It's even a little over here. Live TV and sports and more, but mostly sports. That's Fubo! To get your best night's sleep, you need to sleep in something extraordinary. Woven with a silky softness unlike any other. From organic threads that are slow spun and finished in flame. Made from an ingredient so rare, less than 1% of the world's cotton meets our quality. It's the most extraordinary fabric ever made. Only from Bowl and Branch. Transactions for the Halos today. Zach Neto, of course, on the 10-day IL with the oblique strain. Andrew Velasquez is here. Jimmy Herget optioned last night to AAA Salt Lake. Colton Ingram recalled from AA. It will be his major league debut when we see him. But as far as Zach Neto, he's really taken this whole thing in stride. He said he actually even feels a little bit better today than he did last night. The pain is kind of subsiding a little bit. So he's keeping a real level head about it. He's not really disappointed about it, even considering how hot his career has to start. He said, when I come back, I'm going to be even better, and maybe this time off will kind of clear my head, give my body a little rest to come out, and hopefully win more ball games. So Squid is here, who is returning himself from an oblique injury. David Fletcher, not an option. He is currently out on the minor league bereavement list with a fake emergency. Guys. All right, Erica, thank you very much. Mickey Moniak batting here in the second as he bounces one foul. Well, hopefully, Zach Neto is not out for much more than the 10 days required. I'll tell you what, he was crushing the baseball with great power. He's made great strides with that, that stride and high leg kick, even with two strikes. Moniak starting in right field tonight instead of Hunter Renfro. And it's one of those innings on the offensive side. You love to score some runs, but you love to give Shohei Otani a little bit of a breather here. That was a long, tough inning to get through. 30 pitches thrown, 16 of them, strikes 14 out of the zone for Shohei. Uvalde threw 21 pitches in the top of the first and had to work out of a bases loaded jam himself. Well, Moniak bouncing a couple of balls foul to get Evaldi's pitch count up. He's about 27% usage of his splitter. He threw three in a row to Shohei before he walked him. There's a couple there in a row to Moniak. Between the two bullpens, the Angels bullpen is probably the most rested entering the final game of this series. Moniak out in front of the curveball from Evaldi, who gets his first strikeout. It's interesting, you know, you see him going back to a curveball there after some hard pitches with a splitter fastball. See how far out in front. I guarantee you, Shohei's looking in that dugout. He hasn't thrown a lot of curveballs of late, especially with two strikes. He'll probably see that and go, you can see how off balance and out in front a hitter could be. You might see him start using his curveball a little bit tonight. Chad Wallach looks at a strike. Evaldi pops 95 on the outside corner. 
Wallach's had good offensive numbers, especially relative to his other major league opportunities. This has been the best Wallach has looked offensively at the big league level in his career. He's really doing a great job of line drives and lift and fly balls, keeping the ball in the air. Baldy does a nice shot too. He kind of throws a little bit across his body, so there's that crossfire delivery. And he's on the inside corner, outside corner, pretty consistent. That's why you see his numbers as good as they are this season. 33 years old. He's had a ton of injuries over the course of his career, but when he has been healthy, he has been really good about what he did for the Red Sox in the playoffs. As Chad Wallach, it's a high fly ball straight away center field. Tavares is back. This ball is deep, and it's gone. Chad Wallach goes to straightaway center field. A long drive, and the Angels have a 1 0 lead. Well, he got that splitter. It was elevated. And he get a chance to celebrate on it. Dead center field. Chad Wallach, sixth of the season. Wow, is he impressive with that power. Again, lifting the ball, hitting the ball in the air to dead center. Impressive swing. That'll help your battery made out. Kabuto time. Tim Buss lays it on Chad Wallach. As Velasquez bunts foul, I thought you might say Chad Wallop. <laughs> I'm saving that for a little bit later. <laughs> it was Wallop by Chad Wallach. Split it, stayed up. Oh, no, I'll tell you what, the baseball's been carrying really well here. 424 feet. That's a serious carry, don't you think? 407 to straightaway center field. Andrew Velasquez loses the handle of the bat. Velasquez is switch hitting again. There's been some moments where they've tinkered with him not switch hitting. It wasn't switch hitting in spring training. Back to it now as he bats left handed here. And just missed the outside corner. Really, the thought for Velasquez is just handle the defense, just kind of replace Neto in that way. And Velasquez is a great defender. And the offense has been so good, they've been able to score so many runs, and Neto's a big part of that. Great speed he has, too. It's like Zach Neto. But it'll at least soften the blow if Velasquez can just handle things defensively. That was a big change for the Angels when Neto came up. Just how much he solidified the entire infield by holding shortstop the way that he had. And Zach Neto on the IL right now. Bill Nevin looking back at the home plate umpire. Getting Alfonso Marquez's attention. Maybe the Angels were thinking about looking to see if they had a review there on the ball that almost hit Velasquez. Velasquez strikes out in a high fastball. Two strikeouts in the inning for Nathan Evaldi, but a home run allowed as well as the Angels have the lead. Renhifo's power. They've already given up some hits on the first pitch. Expect the same from Luis Renjifo. Be ready. I'm sure, there will still be some days where Renjifo plays shortstop. While Zach Neto is out. Again, no Brandon Drury tonight as Drury is fulfilling a one game suspension. So that crossfire delivery. Get to that outside part of the plate to a right handed batter inside to a left handed batter for Evaldi. If he leaves it out over the plate, that's your chance against this fastball. 
Splitter there, and it's two balls, two strikes. And Splitter was a big part of Evaldi's evolution way back when he was with the Yankees. In 2015, he was 14 and 3 that year. And his splitter was a big part for his turnaround as a young pitcher. Good battle, working that pitch count some more. This pitch will be number 42 of the night. So 21 in the first inning. Same thing at least here in the second. Curve misses. Three balls, two strikes on Renifo with Taylor Ward on deck. Renifo's been drawing more walks this year. More walks already this year than he had the entire year last year. That was nearly about 500 at bats, 489 at bats. And he's found some good patience. Now three and two. He swings and misses on a pitch that would have been ball four. Angels take the lead. Chad Wallach. Destroys one to trade away center field, 424 feet for a one nothing lead. Baseball's biggest moments are live on MLB Big Inning. MLB.tv's nightly show takes you from game to game for all the grand slams, no hitters, walk offs, and more as they happen. Wow, he can do it all! Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. This is some kind of awesome. After your game ends, the action's just heating up on MLB Big Inning. Every night on MLB.tv. Shohei Otani threw a lot of four-seam fastballs in the first inning tonight of his 30 pitches. 20 were fastballs. That's, that's amazing how many four-seam fastballs he threw. Looks like Arshel is out of the game now. And Walsh over first base. And the Angels have very little on their bench now because they don't have Drury due to the suspension. Walsh has come in for Urshela. That leaves just Renfro and Thice. As the Angels play now two men short. I do like that first pitch, even though it was a ball for Shohei. Tavares has done a lot of damage and hit the ball hard on the first pitch when it's been in the zone. So he tried to do that backdoor sweeper. Just a little off the plate, then late on the very next fastball. There is golfs one toward left field pretty deep Ward going back for it leached to make the catch. Baseball has been carrying really well in that first few steps in and then has to quickly go back Taylor Ward and reaches up and makes the play. Well, now nobody on. Robbie Grossman, the batter.
still trying to get a feel for a sweeper. Two balls, no strikes on Grossman, who's the DH tonight. Good cutter. Seems he's had a better feel for that pitch than the sweeper so far tonight. And a lot of times you think of that cutter, it almost resembles his old slider he used to throw around 90 to 93 range. There's the heater, and it's on the outer half. Two balls, two strikes on Grossman. Bouncing ball right back to the mound. Shohei will run it over and then flip to Jared Walsh. Full unicorn. Shohei Otani has become just a marvel in every single way. 20 homers and 100 strikeouts. He's the only player ever to do that. And he's done it now in three straight years. Incredible start to the season for Shohei. And 10 stolen bases. He'll be in the All-Star game. By the way, he took care of his first baseman there. A lot of times you can run all the way through, but you waited the last second, flip it over to get that fielding percentage for Jared yeah. Walsh, taking care of him. There you go, a put out for That's Jared a friend. Walsh. He is a great friend to everyone. We just had National Best Friends Day. Yes. We missed it. Travis Jankowski with the ground ball base hit. Good speed aboard on a two out single for the number eight batter, Jankowski. And it brings up Josh Smith. Smith, no batting gloves as he steps in to face Shohei. I'm sure Shohei will be asked to do a lot at the All Star game next month in Seattle. And likely be, and extremely likely to be, the starting DH in that game. Maybe he'll pitch too. Put on the full unicorn show for the American League All Star team. Smith with a pop up over third. Rendon backing up to the outfield grass to make the catch. That ends the bottom of the second. This is Chris Bryant. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Chris Bryant plays hard so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo. Helping players play harder on MLB Network. channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen and it's gone. with live lookings to clutch at bats and players on the edge of making history this could be it 62 it's the best seat in the house at every ballpark all commercial free can you believe it mlb network strike zone wednesdays and fridays all season long Got something to say about the game? I want to hear that. Don't just talk about it. Get caught up so we can talk about it on the show. Intentional talk about it. I think this is when opportunity arises. Join the conversation with Intentional Talk on MLB Network. We're watching. We're watching. Suite at the Big A entertain guests with all inclusive packages. Call 888 796 Halo or visit angels.com slash suites. Next home games will be against the Dodgers Tuesday and Wednesday at the Big A. Should be a festive atmosphere for those. As Taylor Ward, it's a bouncing ball to Corey Seeger. One pitch, one out here in the third. 
Shohei Otani has hit some unbelievable home runs already this year, and last night's ranks right up there. 116 miles an hour off the bat. The hardest hit ball to the opposite field by a left-handed hitter in the StatCast era. Look at all the balls that have been hit by lefties that hard and where they go. Nothing even close to the opposite field. I mean, when you look at it, when you went out there on the field today, we we're looking up how far that was. Both home runs to left center in this series, but that one last night out at 116.1 miles per hour exit velocity was crushed. 453. Throws this one over to the right side, and Simeon will throw out Shohei. It's not like the right handed batters are doing it either. The only righty who's done that is Giancarlo Stanton. There's Mike Trout with two out and nobody on. Remember last time out, Trout just missed one against Avaldi. Right out to straightaway center field. Broken back ground ball, Seeger charges and throws it over. Very quick inning for Evaldi, as quick as of the night, one, two, three. Every hero has an origin story. The MLB Draft Combine, an exclusive look at the game's next prodigies, phenoms, and future heroes. Leading up to the MLB Player Draft, live coverage only on MLB Network. Imagine an entire channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen. It's gone! With live lookings to clutch at bats. A walk -off and players on the edge of making history. This could be it! 62! It's the best seat in the house at every ballpark. All commercial free. Can you believe it? MLB Network Strike Zone. Wednesdays and Fridays, all season long. Profile is Shohei Otani is on the mound tonight. Average exit velocity this season. Well, as a hitter, he's among the best in the American League. As a pitcher, he is the best in the American League in terms of average exit velocity. And we could throw this stuff at you all day, really. And it's one stat after the other, one remarkable accomplishment after the other. There's really never been anyone like this in the history of baseball really one or two years there when Babe Ruth was transitioning from being a pitcher to a hitter where he kind of did both. It was 1919 I believe it was Ruth's last year with the Red Sox the one year where he really was a two way star hitting and pitching. And then as he got to the Yankees, became just a hitter. It's already the fourth 0 2 count tonight for Shohan. It's phenomenal what he's been able to do. I and mean, do it every day, playing every day. And that's an important note. He is playing every day. Simeon rolls one over. Think about this. Since 2021, Marcus Simeon has faced more pitchers 
than anyone in the major leagues. 1,765 plate appearances for Simeon. Sandy Alcantara has faced more hitters than anybody in that time. 2,132. But if you combine Shohei's at bats, his plate appearances with the batters that he has faced as a pitcher, he dwarfs those numbers. He has had 3,109 pitcher batter confrontations of some kind since 2021. Just about a thousand more than Sandy Alcantara, who has the most for any pitcher, and about 1,300 plus more than Simeon, who's had the most for any hitter. Unbelievable. There's a breaking ball, and Simeon out in front. It's a high fly ball to left field. Simeon was just in front of it enough to not hit that ball a long way. Here's tonight's Hyundai key for the game today. Always a friend, Alejandro Sevedo. Shohei Otani is always a friend. We saw that and said that earlier for Shohei. With that nice little assist to Jerry Walsh in that ground ball. By the way, that's an out on a curve ball that Shohei got Simeon out just enough on it. Down the line, Jared Walsh diving play from the seat of his pants. Throws out Corey Seager. See, you, you make a nice play, take care of your first base, and look what he does for you. That's another out on a curveball from Shohei. What a play. A Jared Walsh, a tough hop. From the seat of his pants, perfect throw to Shohei. Covered a great direction to the map to the base that straight line is that used to be go up the line just go right at the bag that's exactly what he did to get the out excellent play by Jared Walsh remember we were saying Wayne we thought he might use his curveball after he saw the out front swing by Mickey Moniak well he's got two outs in this inning with his curveball being back to being the creative one and being unpredictable Two balls, no strikes on Nathaniel Lowe, who struck out his first time. Only strikeout so far for Shohei. a good sweeper and it's a two and two count now on low. Just like you saw that very good slider last night for Reed Denver because he threw some good curveballs. It makes both those pitches effective. Another curveball almost got him a chase. All of a sudden using that very effective pitch. Got a piece of that and stayed alive on the fastball. Three balls, two strikes. Shohei threw 30 pitches in the first inning. He's thrown just 25 to get the next five outs. Trying to get as deep into this game as he can against Nathan Evaldi, who figures to go pretty deep into it as well. Oh, with a fly ball, left center field, hit well. Trout is back for it near the warning track. That ball is off the wall, bounces right to Trout. Uh, Nathaniel Lowe gets so many opposite field hits, adds one more. A double off the base of the wall in left center field. And he stayed on that curveball a little bit better after. Pretty good when he threw just below the strike zone and he didn't go after. Ball had some carry to it. This more of the strike zone. The right pitch, but stayed up and he stayed on it. There's Adolis Garcia. First hit allowed by Shohei on the curveball this year. 
And I still wouldn't go away from that pitch. It's, it's effective. He got two outs with his curveball in this inning. Simeon flied out to left. Seeger bounced down in a diving play by Jared Walsh. Nice play by Chad Wallach. He wanted that fastball up and in. It was a fastball away and down. And at 99, how quick you got to react to that. And it's important to keep him at second because Shohei has an assortment of pitches he could potentially bounce if he gets the two strikes to get a swing and miss. And bloop down the right field line, slicing. It stays fair. Base hit for Garcia, scores low. Back to back doubles tie the game at one. Surprising the numbers against Shohei with runners in scoring position this season. This inside out certainly didn't hit it hard, but placed it well. Strong enough a couple times in this game to get that flare into the outfield twice. Tonight, opponents hitting 283 against Otani with runners in scoring position, which is more than 100 points ahead of his career pace, which is 174. Jonah Heim at the plate now with the game tied at one. He lines one to right center field, moving over Moniak. That's a base hit. The Rangers take the lead with three straight two out hits. And he's just made contact against Shohei. Not exactly squared up, but it fell in there nice for him. Not a whole lot of exit velocity on him, but placed well. Wise and Ipe at the mound to talk to Shohei, who is historically good with opponents, runners in scoring position, OPS over the last two years. This year he's been hit hard with runners in scoring position at OPS near a thousand. And three straight two out hits here, two with runners in scoring position. Run scoring double from Garcia, base hit for Heim. And the Angels behind a run. And all those hits have been on different pitches here with two outs. Curveball, fastball, cutter. There's Leoti Tavares who lined out to left field his last time. Usually bats at the bottom of the order, hitting sixth tonight as the Rangers rest some of their regulars. Ground ball hits sharply, but right at Renhifo. And that ends the inning. Three straight two out hits, and it's Texas in front. With ButcherBox, you never have to worry about what's for dinner. We deliver grass-fed beef, organic, free-range chicken, humanely raised pork, wild-caught seafood, and so much more. Get high-quality meat sourced from trusted partners with free shipping always. So you can always be prepared and enjoy the important things. Join ButcherBox today and get 100% grass-fed ground beef free for a year.
tier. Kind of all the, it's living on the edges on all his pitches. Even tonight, all season long, when he's on the edges, very difficult to make good contact. He's got some soft contact, but when he missed the middle part of the plate, more of the zone. Chad Wallach hits that out of the ballpark against him. So you've got to try to bring him in the zone, the edges, which he's been so good at. It's very difficult to hit. He's 160. He's on those shadow on the edges. One over the inner half to Rendon. One ball, one strike. Rendon hit by a pitch in the first inning. Angels loaded the bases with one out but didn't score. Wallach's homer came in the second. Now the Angels down by a run. And Valdi has typically gone deep into games this year. We mentioned his last 10 starts, he hasn't lost. He's averaged seven innings per start in that time. It includes a couple of complete games. One against the Yankees, a three hit shutout. Another against the Pirates. He allowed one run, six hits, May 23rd. With eight and two thirds innings in a game against Oakland, had 12 strikeouts, nearly getting a third complete game. And the Angels saw him in California at the Big A. He worked eight scoreless innings. This is the outside corner there. And it's interesting because that pitch before was very similar as far as the spot and Anthony Rendon asked if it got the corner. And this time Rendon gets the benefit of that one. Even though both of them were out of the strike zone. A full count, three balls, two strikes. And that one is in there. Strike three called on the outer half. Paints this one right on that edge like we just got done showing how good he is when he pitches on that part of the plate the edges First at bat for Jared Walsh who didn't start in this game Gio Urshela got banged up on a play at first base trying to he to play at first that resulted in a double play and there's a base hit for Walsh down the right field line that's going to roll to the wall a well struck extra base hit as Jared Walsh now hustles to second Garcia with that great arm made it close but Walsh has a one out double good to see a baseball hit hard by Jared Walsh ball was rocketed right field corner that got more of the middle of the plate it was elevated and he jumped on it One of the hardest hit balls all season long by Walsh. 108.2 miles per hour in that double. And with Neto out, it's a game changer if Walsh can find his bat. That would really help replace Neto's offense if Walsh can come around. He's had a good night so far in a game that he wasn't expecting to play in. Great play at first base to Rob Seeger of a base hit and now a double of his own. And we got Moniak to swing and miss on a curveball last at bat. He started him there with a 1 curveball. Moniak struck out his last time. Came right back to it again. Pretty good numbers versus his curveball. 11 strikeouts, a pretty high whiff percentage, nearly 35%. And the act lays off the high fastballs. So Uvalde had him in position 0 and 2, but now it's back to even. Breaking ball, line to right center, base hit. Walsh touches up at third. He's being sent home. Leone Tavares with his throw to the plate way up the line. Mickey Modiak ties the game. It's 2-2 on an RBI single to score Walsh. Well, he has been so clutch. This time he adjusted on his curveball. That curveball got the zone and an RBI single for Mickey Modiak. 13 RBI. Stayed on that one. Stayed back. Good swing for Modiak. Getting the job done. He's got so many big hits already this season for the Angels. That's a big one, especially that the Rangers took the lead 2-1, to one, now tied up at 2. Valdi was touched up a bit in his last start against the Rays, allowed four runs in six and a third. 
And Wallach with a chopper to the left side. Seeger gets it to second to one. Simeon's throw a little high to first, but low back on the back to end the inning. Angels tie it up, a double and a single. Mickey Moniak drives in the tie run. Sure, you'll teach her to drive a car. Then use Greenlight and teach her to save up for her own car. Mowing lawns and getting paid. Navigate the world of earning, saving, and investing together. Invest in your best investment. Greenlight. Create amazing work with Fiverr. All you need is your team and a talented freelancer who will lend a hand and seamlessly join your team from just about anywhere. Expand your team with a Fiverr freelancer. When the details take precedence, the rest falls perfectly into place. We strip away everything but the essential. And what we're left with are thoughtful bedrooms for modern living. Thuma. We love going to games, but good seats get pricey. So we use Game Time. Game Time checks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. Angels Baseball and Valley Sports brought to you by Hyundai. It's your journey on every mile in a brand new Hyundai. By OC Healthcare Agency, build your healthiest self at angels.ocnavigator.org. And by your local Southern California Cadillac dealers. Shohei Otani on the mound for the Angels threw four curveballs in third, although one of them resulted in Nathaniel Lowe double that sparked. Texas's rally two runs three hits all with two outs in that third inning now the bottom of the order do up in the fourth as Robbie Grossman looks at strike one really important inning here for Shohei quick inning put up a zero Shohei has thrown 64 pitches now Angels would like to at least see him get through the sixth inning. Should have Davinsky and Estevez and Bachman today. Soriano. Jacob Webb. All yeah. be ready. Yeah. The bullpen should be pretty stocked behind Otani. Really say the same about the Rangers behind Evaldi, who has thrown 62 pitches. He's really sharpened his pitch count after a couple of tough innings early. Well, just see that pep in the step right there for Walsh after that swing he had. He made a great defensive play. All the way in this game and a double. 108.2 miles per hour exit velocity. Good to see that. Jared Walsh. Could be huge, like you mentioned, Wayne, especially with Zach Neto going to be out for a little bit. You could definitely use that bat if Walsh can get it going. Grossman doesn't offer it that high fastball. Two balls, two strikes. Grossman was with Atlanta last year. At least in the second half of the season, he was. That's in there. Strike three called over the outside edge as Otani hits the back door with the sweeper. That's just his second strikeout tonight. It's one to start the bottom of the fourth. That's one of those nasty ones you give up with the hitter. You think that's off the plate and you bring around and get that outside corner. That's a backdoor sweeper. And there's Jankowski had a base hit his first time. Gross from now one for 11. There's Sotani. 
comes the strike and it's one and one Jankowski from Lancaster PA. Had some time with the Phillies a couple of years ago. And Jankowski's nickname is Fred. His whole family calls him Fred because they say he's so sweet and polite that he reminds him of Mr. Rogers. <laughs> and he loved the show when he was a kid. He watched it all the time. So, so can he politely make it out? Yeah, well, won't you be my neighbor? That's neighborly fun right there with Rendell right. and Wallace. Thanks, Fred. Yes. Very nice. Very polite. No need for a sweater in this place, though, that's for sure. <laughs> no. To round nobody on is Josh Smith bats. That's three batters in a row. He started off each hitter with a sweeper. Working that in a little bit more here the second time around. Didn't throw it at all in the first inning. Or didn't throw it much, I should say. Threw it five times out of his 30 pitch first inning. Two balls and a strike on Smith, the number nine batter. Marcus Simeon is on deck as this game is tied at two. Angels trying to win the series, take three out of four against a good opponent. And just missed, and it's three balls, one strike. Good crowd here tonight, nearly a sellout, not quite. Close. There's Strike two to make it a full count. So an expansive ballpark doesn't have a huge seating capacity. About Thirty-seven thousand would be a, a selling you know, with the way the seats are constructed. That's in there. Strike three called. Otani pulls the sweeper over the outside corner. Strikes out two and a one-two-three in it. You want highlights? Quick pitch has you covered. Packing all the day's biggest plays into one lightning fast hour. What a play! We live today, preview tomorrow on Quick Pitch. Late nights and every morning, only on MLV Network. up with every team on MLB Network wherever you go. Just download the MLB app, click MLB Network, and sign in with your TV provider info. Then watch MLB Network all day, every day, your way. at your Halos take on the Diamondbacks at 6.30. The first 25,000 fans will receive a straw beach hat and receive memorial care. For more on this season's giveaways, angels.com slash promotions. Andrew Velasquez leads off the fifth inning against Nathan Evaldi. Oh, it'll be nice to get a straw hat just as it starts to really heat up. It's supposed to get sunny and warmer this weekend back home. Yeah, it better. 
Now I have a real issue. <laughs> I've already got a few. Simeon handles that bouncer and throws out Velasquez. One away in the fifth. Walden, even though with that power arm, he still gets his fair share of ground ball outs. 51.7% ground ball rate. And he's got some ground ball outs already in this game. And seven outs via the ground ball, including a double play ball or two double play balls. And they get eight outs via ground ball with two double plays. And here's Luis Renjifo struck out his first time. It's going to have to be Renjifo or Walsh to really step up offensively while Neto is out. We don't really know how long Neto will be out. You heard the report earlier that he's feeling better already today. Injured himself just throwing the ball while warming up as the infielders take a few ground balls from the first baseman in between innings, and that's when Neto hurt himself. And Hifo hits one towards center field. Leody Tavares has that. Two quick outs for Evaldi here in the fifth inning. And that pitch count really starting to be in Evaldi's favor. 66 pitches in four and two thirds innings. Amazing what he's done as far as innings already is pitches here. When you go back to last year, just a little over 100. A couple years ago, 180. But before that, he really wasn't a guy that had a lot of innings pitched during the course of regular season. Taylor Ward bats with two out, nobody on. Especially with in this Angels lineup. There's a lot of guys in this lineup for the Angels that will be aggressive on the first pitch. Ward being one. Otani is one. And Hifo. Vasquez is also. And we've only got to 180 plus innings in 2021. That was the most innings he had pitched in the season since 2014. <laughs> Been seven years since he really had a fully healthy season. And he was enormous for the Red Sox in their world championship year in 2018. He was great in the postseason. A 161 ERA. I felt like he was pitching every game in the World Series. Well, if you remember that 18 inning game the Red Sox and Dodgers played in that World Series, Evaldi threw six innings out of the bullpen. He threw 97 pitches out of the bullpen in that game. The most by a pitcher in the World Series since 1977. Ward, it's a one hopper to third as Josh Smith retires him. Rick Porcello said it was the most incredible pitching performance he had ever seen. See it. He struck him out. It's out of here. Feel it. I can't wait for this game to start. He took a home run away. Leave it. That is as good as it gets. Oh the big plays. The beauty of sports. It's when the hero comes through. Yeah. The tense moments. We have an update. We must show you. Done it again. With live look-ins, highlights, and breakdowns. That might be what it takes to win. MLB tonight on MLB Network. I love the boys and girls clubs because they help you believe that you can make it to the big leagues. Big leagues of what? Law. Art. Construction. Baseball. How'd you guess? <laughs> With the help of Major League Baseball, the boys and girls clubs of America help kids make it to the big leagues of anything.
Twitter here for Shohei Otani, how he has evolved. You go back to 2021, 087, best in baseball as far as dominating with a pitch. And then last season with a sweeper, the best in baseball with an opponent's batting average of 165 on a sweeper. Then you go here to this season, what Shohei Otani has done with his four-seam fastball. 117 opponent's batting average, best in baseball. So splitter best in 21, sweeper best in 22. So far the season is four-seamer the best in baseball. Shohei will face the top of the order for Texas here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Simeon Seeger and Lowe against Otani. Surprised to see that Simeon and Seeger with their back to back home runs. You see how Shohei and Ivaldi, that's how you pitch deep in the games. You make your way through the third time through the order with no problem. Marcus Stroman has done the same for the Cubs and Stroman pitching tonight as well. Amazing. Both pitchers, their, their second time through, their batting average increased somewhat and then boom, it goes way down third time through. Concern here though for Shohei is the pitch count. He's at 78 pitches. If he has to use up a lot in this inning, it could be his last inning. We'll get him up near 100. And Simeon and Seeger back to back homers yesterday. Just the first time this year that they've done that, and only the second time they've done it as teammates. Both guys with a lot of power. Both have hit 1 2 in the order pretty much the entire time they've been together here in Texas since the beginning of last season. But just those. Two instances of back to back homers with the one last night. Fifth time Shelley's been ahead of the count 0 2 already tonight. Yes. Three strikeouts in this game. Now Simeon with a fly ball down the left field line as Taylor Ward watches it drop in foul territory. I want to give him that same look like he had last night when he thought he pulled that one foul and then all of a sudden he looked up that baseball that kept drifting back and hit the foul pole. Well, that was going to be short that one. That sweeper a little bit more of the strike zone than Shohei wanted to. See how quick he can make an adjustment. And now get Simeon to go out of out of the zone on this pitch. Simeon pops up a fastball. And as Moniak comes in, Renhipo's calling for it, and Renhipo makes the catch. They can get another out on a four seam fastball. That quick adjustment by Shohei. And the sweeper has been his most often used pitch this year, but not tonight. He's thrown his fastball about half the time. He's maxed out at 100 miles an hour with that pitch. For as many fastballs as he has thrown, he has had above average velocity, at least for himself tonight. His average velocity on the four seam fastball is 97. Tonight it's been 98. Seeger pulls a ground ball. Walsh knocks it down, picks it up, shovels it to first. It is in time. Otani holds the bag. At I least that was the view of Ramon De Jesus. I think they're going to look at that one. I think they'll look at that one. I don't think anybody's moving away from first. You can't just hold your hand up all day. Bruce Bochy now is asking for a review. Yeah, he's definitely off the bag on that one. I think because of it, he was expecting a little harder to throw. I mean, I don't know. Well, that was a pretty good stretch. He was like a first baseman there. <laughs> that view is a little closer. We've certainly seen our share of replay reviews where it looks like one thing and then something else is called. But as we look on the video board, I mean, I don't, I don't think the toe's off the bag yet. Uh, they're not quite as emphatic about it getting to look at now, the crowd. That could be a real big call here for the Angels. Not even get the out, but also no more I mean, look challenges. The, on the still photo on the video board, the toe is on the back. Jared Walsh Ball's is on the glove. He's dead. He's out. Yeah, Jared Walsh is going back to his normal first base position. So the Rangers the unicorn is amazing. Yeah, he just he just stretched out. Inspector <laughs> Gadget style. Yes. 
the elastic man. He just, just stretched. Review the call is confirmed. The runner is out. Texas will lose their challenge. And it's I a thought point. initially he was, but I mean, it's amazing how he's able to keep his toe on the base. It's important to note that they said the call is confirmed. That means that they could tell that he was out. I have no idea how he was able to do that, too. He does it all. <laughs> Can't be surprised anymore. <laughs> does he win daddy long legs on us? <laughs> Daniel Lowe bats with two out, nobody on. Somehow dancing with the stars is seeing that move right there, thinking, hey, we got a pretty good contestant. Well, it's an important batter here because as he now has 85 pitches, you can maybe stretch another inning out of him if he gets through this final out quickly. Falls behind Lowe, two balls and no strikes. A couple of quick outs to start the inning. Lowe usually is up there swinging early. Couple pitches well out of the strike zone, though. Hit hard and through, base hit for low. And keeps the inning going, keeps the pitch count rising as the batter will be Garcia. Low had a two out double in the third inning, and that started a string of three straight hits that plated the only two runs so far tonight for Texas. Low is now eight for 19 against Shelley. How many people can say that? Except for Jonah Heim, you want to make sure he is leading off the next inning. Goldie's Garcia is two for two tonight. He had been just two for 15 lifetime against Shohei entering this game. Right handed batters in general don't hit Shohei real well. 167. That's why I see a lot of left handed bats in this lineup. Switch hitters too, but a lot of left handed bats going. Bruce Bochy against Shohei today. And that's why Young and Duran, a couple of right handers who play regularly, are not in there. This one off the glove of Wallach, and that puts Lowe in scoring position. Off the glove, he anticipated that one in there. Let's see a tough call. Might end up being a wild pitch. It is a wild pitch, and now. Lowe's at second. Shohei will try to fight through this fifth inning. Fastball that Garcia fouled off for strike two. Garcia's 55 RBIs are one off the major league lead. Rafael Devers of the Red Sox has driven in 56. Shohei Otani will be leading off. Top of the six, he'd like to have that energy with it's still a 2 2 game. 1 2 coming to Adolis Garcia. That was close. Curve stayed up just a little. Let's see if this gets the top, top of the strike zone. Shohei wanted that one. So he doesn't seem to get a whole lot of borderline pitches go his way, that's for sure. Ground ball left side. It's caught by Rendon. It's a line drive off the bat of Garcia. And Rendon able to make the catch to end the inning. Shohei will lead off at the top of the six. This game still tied at two. baseball goes beyond the field. What an exciting time. Together. 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 channel dedicated to taking you to the most exciting moments in baseball as they happen and it's gone. with live look-ins to clutch at bats A walk -off and players on the edge of making history this could be it 62 
It's the best seat in the house at every ballpark. All commercial free. Can you believe it? MLB Network Strike Zone. Wednesdays and Fridays, all season long. Entering the sixth inning, and Shohei Otani leads off. Gave up those two runs in the third. That's been it. In the month of June, Shohei has had an OPS of over 1,400. He has hit eight home runs since May 30th. His numbers are now jumping off the page. OPS nearly 1,000. His 21 homers lead the American League. There's only one behind Pete Alonso now for the major league lead in home runs. His great numbers when he's been pitching on the offensive side. Valdi pops the bottom of the zone there. So he's looking, okay, you know, I got to get those borderline pitches, <laughs> two of them in this at bat already. Pitch was pretty much in the same spot, but called a ball. A gutsy to take it after yeah. it was called a strike on the previous pitch. And there's ball three. And if Shohei has bought himself another inning on the mound, nobody is throwing in the Angels' bullpen. He's at 92 pitches. This is an important game, and. Bill Nevin will want to ride the ace of the staff as long as he can. So looks like Shohei will pitch one more inning tonight. See if he can give himself the lead right here. And he draws a walk, and the go ahead run is on. Another walk for Shohei. Seen him steal many bases in the games that he's been pitching. Nobody can. Ten stolen bases. He's had one in a game that he has pitched in this year. It's amazing. That walk in the first inning for Shohei was the 13th time, the third time this year he has walked in the first inning on the day he's pitching. This is according to Matt Birch giving this information. According to stat head data, that goes back to 1914. The only other pitcher with five plus walks in the first inning is a hitter. And the pitcher would be. Babe Ruth with seven. Ball one strike on Trout, who has flied out and grounded out tonight. So many great numbers, so many power numbers for Trout in his career against the Rangers. And he's hit the most home runs ever against the Texas Rangers, just like he has against the Mariners. It's two teams in the division that he has tortured over the years. The off walk to Shohei. Go ahead, run is on. And Trout strikes out in the high fastball. We're seeing fastball upper part of the strike zone and Trout has seen a ton of those pitches of late. Five strikeouts for Evaldi. Three of them came in the second inning. And pumps in a strike to Anthony Rendon. 82 pitches now thrown for Evaldi tonight. He is a strike thrower. The two walks though that Shohei Otani. Tonight. He's sat on that bench and watched what Shoei Otani has done swinging the bat 
against his teammates. And don't try to bunt. And it's no balls, two strikes. Evaldi this year uh, struck out 88 against just 19 walks. It's a four to one ratio, which is excellent. The only other pitcher in Rangers history to have a similar one at this point in the season was Cliff Lee in 2010. Valdi has been outstanding. He's certainly going to be an all-star next month. He's been the best pitcher the Rangers have had. Rendon with two strikes. Bunts for strike three. And now you have to wonder if that left wrist is okay. It's got to be sore. It's got to be the reason. And knows he has to play defense. Rendon was hit on the left wrist by a pitch earlier. It was weird that he bunted with one strike and just completely strange that he bunted with two. The Angels basically don't have a bench right now. Well, if you did make any sort of move, I guess Taylor Ward would have to play third or, or Thice or Wallet. There's just no room with Brandon Drury serving a suspension tonight. Urshela came out of this game because of an injury. Neto went on the IL before the game today. Walsh with a high bouncer to first, and that will end the inning. The Angels don't do anything after a leadoff walk. Baseball's biggest moments are live on MLB Big Inning. MLB.tv's nightly show takes you from game to game for all the grand slams, no hitters, walk-offs, and more as they happen. Wow, he can do it all! Don't miss the ultimate baseball highlight reel. This is some kind of awesome. After your game ends, the action's just heating up on MLB Big Inning. Every night on MLB.tv. It's like this. Valley Sports brought to you by Nissan. Explore great deals. The Nissan Thrill of the Drive sales event. Shop NissanUSA.com. And by Jack in the Box introducing Snoop's Munchie Meal. Available for a limited time only at Jack in the Box. Shohei Otani back on the mound for what will very likely be his last inning of work at the bottom of the sixth. Usually when Shohei Otani gets to that point of a game where you know it's getting close to that last inning, that's where he amps it up. He's already amped up that fastball today with his extra velocity on his four-seam fastball. And let's take a look at our StatCast 3D powered by Google Cloud. Both pitchers are really bringing that velocity on their fastballs today. Shohei has touched 100, a little over 100 miles per hour, and evaldi has been just under 97 on the best fastball so far today. See that separation about a foot a over a foot for that 97 as compared to 100.3 Shohei. So he's been averaging what about 98 miles per hour on his four seam fastball throughout this game coming in 97.1 his average fastball velocity. Well, we just mentioned the munchy meal and now we get to see it live. Here's Jack in the box. 
So, Jack, that a baked brownie in my munchy meal? You know it, Snoop. Say less. Well, we'll say less. Well, I want to say everything about the munchy meal. Yes. We need, to, we need Snoop to come to the Big A and talk to us about the munchy meal yeah. and what's happening in his life. It's, it's an very, open invitation for Snoop to come yeah. down. Hang out with us. Yeah, forget about the Kings. It's baseball. It's America's pastime. Jonah Heim leads off the bottom of the sixth inning. This is that time of the year now where baseball gets to own the summer. Hockey is over. Basketball is over. Football won't start for two and a half, three months. And it's baseball time now. Jonah Heim jammed as he pops it up. Moniak coming a long way in. And he makes the catch as Renhifo scurries out of the way. One out here in the sixth. Good idea for Renhifo not to get that close to Moniak coming in. It's much easier play for an outfielder coming in on the baseballs compared to an infielder going back on it. Always good to get Jonah Heim out. He's had such success against Shohei. Ball one to Leody Tavares. The Angels are banged up right now, and they are playing short tonight anyway without Brandon Drury due to his suspension. This team goes to Kansas City after the game tonight. Three games with the Royals starts tomorrow. Patrick Sandoval will pitch tomorrow night against Brady Singer. This is Griffin Canning on Saturday afternoon. Tyler Anderson Sunday against Zach Greinke. Down ball to second. Renhifo gets in front of it. Two up, two down here in the sixth inning. And Shohei really cutting down on the number of pitches he's thrown over these last few innings. Solved the puzzle of the unicorn. Nobody else seems to be able to. Tuesday, June 27th against the White Sox. The first 25,000 fans will receive a Shohei Otani puzzle. Courtesy of Yako Probiotic Drink. Visit angels.com slash promotions for details. Remember, Shohei threw 30 pitches in the first inning alone. So he has thrown 68 over the four and two-thirds innings since then. And has at least been able to put himself in a position to get through six. And you see the middle innings especially cutting down on the number of pitches thrown by a lot. He's looking to have that first one, two, three inning. Oh, yeah, he has had one, one, two, three. That was in the fourth. Love to do it again. Right there to Renifo. One, two, three in the sixth for Shohei Otani. He sends this game to the seventh. Still time. This is Mookie Betts. This is Christopher Russo. And this is the High Heat Hot Seat. Mookie Betts plays hard, so he doesn't end up here. High Heat with Christopher Russo. Helping players play harder on MLB Network. See it. He struck him out. It's out of here. Feel it. I can't wait for this game to start. He took a home run away. Leave it. That is as good. The big play. The beauty of sports is when the hero comes through. Yeah, the tense moments. We have an update. We must show you. Done it again. With live look-ins, highlights, and breakdowns. That might be what it takes to win. MLB Tonight on MLB Network. Sunday, MLB Network celebrates Juneteenth. Join Harold Reynolds, Mookie Betts, and some of the game's biggest names for a look at the business of baseball through the eyes of African-American players. MLB Tonight, a conversation, Sunday at 7 Eastern on MLB Network.
out after finishing the sixth inning one two three Phil Nevin there to greet him and give him a pat on the back a job well done especially so after a 30 pitch first inning. So Tani was able to cut through six tonight through 99 pitches allowing two runs both of those came in the third inning. The Angels have touched up Nathan Evaldi for two runs in his six innings. And Evaldi has enough in the tank to go one more here. Pretty efficient at 87 pitches. Uh, tough. It's tough. First two in really. 48, 43 pitches combined. Miss Davinsky is up in the Angels bullpen. Nicky Moniak with a fly ball hit pretty well. Right center field. Tavares is going back. He's at the wall and is gone. Mickey Moniak gives the Angels the lead. He takes out Nathan Evaldi. It's three to two. How clutch has he been in that seventh inning or later? Close, late. Mickey Moniak is so fine with that swing. Dead center field. Sixth home run, second RBI for the Mick. Wow, what a swing. That ball went a long way out. 429. To the deepest part of the ballpark, there are two spots both to the right and to the left of straightaway center field where the wall is marked at 410 feet. Those are the deepest parts of Globe Life Field, and Mickey Moniak punched it out over the 410 sign in right center. It's the second homer allowed by Evaldi tonight, who had only given up four all year entering today. One of those to Chad Wallach, who swings and misses. So now Shohei is in line for the win. Should be some game for the Angels to lock down a victory, considering what they're up against from an injury standpoint, a suspension standpoint. Wallach punches out. Marco top tier play as Mickey Moniak gives the Angels the lead. It's been so impressive in these moments in the games, Arco. Top tier play. It's a fastball four seamer down 94 mile an hour fastball in the wheelhouse. For Mickey Moniak and left handed swings to dead center field 429. It's a velocity of 106 miles per hour. His power at this level has been impressive this year. That's six home runs in 71 at bats for Moniak plus six doubles and a triple. His OPS around a thousand since he got his call up and he was hitting the ball about the same way at Triple A before that. Former number one overall pick. As Andrew Velasquez swings through a splitter. It's one ball one strike. The Angels can get out of this place with another win take three out of four in this series with a bit of a banged up roster right now. They could fly high all the way to Kansas City as they'll play the worst team in the major leagues this weekend. And be in the hands of the Angels bullpen in the bottom of the seventh. So he did his part battle a very deep lineup for the Rangers tonight. Kept the ball in the yard today, Shohei. Nivaldi gets another strikeout. This one on Andrew Velasquez. That's four in the last two innings and eight tonight for Nathan Ivaldi, two way. And the batter will be Red Hippo. Let's go back down. That's a great swing for Moniak. He got a fastball in that zone, 94, brought it down. Baldi's fastball on the corners is so good on the edges. Fastball in the inner half and down. Angels have three runs on five hits. Rangers two runs on six hits. The starting pitchers, the aces of their respective staffs, have both been pretty good tonight. The Angels have touched up Ivaldi just enough.
Kavinsky will pitch the bottom of the seventh. So he stays alive. Valdi has now thrown 100 pitches. This is very likely his last inning. He did throw 113 in his complete game against the Yankees and also against the A's when he was one out away from a complete game. Shohei didn't get the big punch outs tonight. Just three strikeouts in six innings. First time he's gone that deep into a game with that low number of strikeouts. Well, it really doesn't matter. Outs or outs. There wasn't a lot of hard contact against Shohei tonight. As we showed earlier, there's not a whole lot of hard contact anyhow against him. And I like the way he uses pitches well. He looks in some curveballs today. His fastball a lot more. And he's trying to make it absolutely certain that Evaldi is done here in the seventh. Three balls, two strikes. It was 0 and 2. Has worked himself into a full count. And he swings and misses on the splitter for strike three. Second time, Renifo has struck out swinging at ball four. But a leadoff homer in the top of the seventh. Mickey Moniak drives one out. The Angels are back in front. Wake up to baseball's biggest stories. Robert Flores wearing tweed. Wake up to big name guests. Very special guests hanging out on the crush red velvet. This show is tough to get ready for. I wake up to a whole lot of fun. <laughs> wearing a robe holding a wooden bun. Oh. MLB Central. It is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> the show baseball fans and baseball players wake up to. Show's starting to pick up. I love the energy. I love the unexpected performances. Weekday mornings on MLB Network. We'll have a little fun and we'll laugh. Jeremy Peña, the world champion shortstop with movie star presencia. Every Dominican wants to grow up and play baseball, bro. When I was 13, I was like, the plan is to get to the big leagues. I love seeing young Dominicans win, bro, because I'm an old Dominican. You know that Dominicans play everyone plays with the ball. Yes, of course. I was just looking forward to playing again, man. This is going to be a fun year. Salud a la vida más linda. Salud, mamá. And coverage all day, every day, your way on MLB Network. On Valley Sports brought to you by Spectrum One, Internet Advanced Wi-Fi and Mobile for just $49.99 a month. Visit Spectrum.com. And by California Community Colleges. Enroll today at I can go to college.com. Nicky Moniak, a go-ahead homer in the top of the seventh to give the Angels the lead. Now he's been so good this season. Late and close. That's those tough moments in games coming in 450 to, uh, 546. Six for 13. A double triple home run. OPS of 1636 and he homered again that late close in the seventh inning. So those numbers even will jump higher with two home runs in that spot. The pitcher for the Angels Chris Davinsky has been one of the better relievers the Halos have had this year. This is not going to be an easy one to steer into the garage tonight. Only nine outs a good lineup. That the Rangers have a close game here at Globe Life Field, as really they all have been. Two balls, one strike on Travis Jankowski. Not a man you want to put on to start an inning because he has great speed. Yeah, 
Gronkowski, then Smith is due up. It's not Smith on deck. Ezekiel Duran is in the on deck circle. Texas getting their bullpen going. It's like Brock Burke. And a full count on Jankowski. Well, that's a pretty good take on a good changeout from Davinsky. So far, he's not going after his. Corner ball four is a change up that was right off the edge of the plate. So now that great speed is on to start the bottom of the seventh, and the Rangers will go to their bench. That was a pretty good pitch. And now they have called back the pinch hitter, so they had Ezekiel Duran in the on deck circle. Now that Jankowski has reached base, they're letting Josh Smith bat for himself. Be situational, either a bun or hit and run. Jankowski's running, and they're going to let him take second base. And that speed pays off immediately. And the tying runs in scoring position. And that leadoff walk is extra detrimental when you have someone who can really fly like Jankowski, his seventh stolen base. Now Smith trying to bunt takes a strike. And he's got that possibility of a pickoff move being put on. Smith has one sacrifice bunt. Swinging away, it's a high fly ball. This will move the runner over anyway. As Trout makes the catch and Jankowski goes to third. Rudolph walk, stolen base, long fly ball, and now the tying run 90 feet away. And with Marcus Simeon, who's been an RBI machine at the top of the order for Texas this year, he has driven in 53 runs. That's an absurd number for a leadoff batter. Got an RBI opportunity here with the tying run at third, the infield in. And for a time, Darren Erstad held the RBI record for a leadoff batter in 2000. Erstad had the first 100 RBI year by a leadoff man. The record was broken just a few years ago by Charlie Blackman. Can't get the hitters to go after that changeup yet below the strike zone. He's been so good. Chris Davinsky. Two balls and a strike. Just missed upstairs. Ball three. Ground ball foul. Now it's three and two. Need a strikeout with Simeon. Same thing with Chris Davinsky. He's been getting a ton of strikeouts. 23 punch outs and 23 and a third coming into this game. Could really use that punch out now. On three and two, Simeon fouls it off again. In front of that changeup, but able to make contact and stay alive. Field in trying to cut down the tying run. Jankowski's at third with one out. Three and two. And it's ball. Four check swing strike three. The ball was in the dirt. Simeon thought he held his swing. Ramon De Jesus said he went around. Marcus Simeon walking all the way down towards him. Let's see if he went. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> yeah, that is a huge break for the Angels. 
walk here to Seager. I, I, I don't think he went on that one. As much as I always say the intent was there, I don't think he went. As the Angels got a huge break on that one. Definitely looked like he held up. Got a break. Seager is already at first after the intentional walk. So now that puts a force out at second base as well. As Nathaniel Lowe bats. A big out for Davinsky. And credit him for making a pitch that Simeon even thought about offering at. A 3 2 pitch in the dirt. Swing and a miss by Nathaniel Lowe on a high fastball. Lowe has two hits tonight. He's also struck out, and he's been striking out a lot lately. You need a strikeout here, just an out of any kind. And now it's 0 and 2. No calls timeout, trying to slow things down. Two quick strikes from Davinsky. After he struck out Marcus Simeon on a 3 2 pitch. Check swing. It didn't look like Simeon went around except to Ramon De Jesus. Runner going. And it's ball one to Nathaniel Lowe as Seeger takes second. Now the go ahead run is in scoring position. And that's part of the risk of walking a man intentionally when he is the go ahead run. That's how dangerous Seeger has been. Bill Nevin was willing to accept that risk. For Seeger is first stolen base. Now two balls, two strikes on low. Interesting thing here for Lowe so far this year, though, and it's why you saw a couple fastballs early on. He's hitting 350 versus off speed. So the best pitch of Chris Davinsky against a guy that hits an off speed pitch. Well, see who wins his battle. Fastball ran in. Now it's a full count at Oles Garcia and all of his RBIs on deck. Lead off walk. Got Davinsky on the tightrope. A steal, a fly out, a strikeout, an intentional walk, another steal. And the Rangers with a base hit could take the lead. Three and two, low. It's a ground ball to second. Renhifo has it. Easy throw in time. Chris Davinsky strands base runners again. He got some out. Marcus Simeon on a 3 2 pitch went around. And the Angels hold the lead into the eighth. Take control of your health by boosting your force field, the immune system. With the Aura Ring, you can listen to your body's signals and raise your defenses. Aura tells you when your temperature is higher than normal, how to improve your sleep, or if your heart rate shows signs of stress, so you can decide to push yourself or to lie low. Live smarter, stronger, healthier with the Aura Ring. Sure, you'll teach her how to drive a car. Then use Greenlight to power her independence with crash detection with 911 dispatch, family location sharing, and emergency SOS alerts. Invest in your best investment with Greenlight. We love going to games, but good seats get pricey. So we use Game Time. Game Time checks ticket prices in real time and finds you all the best last minute deals. We got our seats 20 minutes ago for 60% off. Last minute tickets at the best price in seconds. Download Game Time now. in the face of Ramon De Jesus, the first base umpire. He's got an earful here between innings as Bruce Bochy is the third member of the Texas Rangers to be ejected here in the last minute. And Bochy's the one with the last say. 
as Ramon De Jesus made what was really a bad call. And it went against the Rangers in the bottom of the seventh on a 3 2 pitch in the dirt. Marcus Simeon looked like he had checked his swing. Ramon De Jesus said no, and Simeon went right out there and talked to Ramon De Jesus after the inning ended. He got thrown out quickly. And for some reason, Mike Maddox, the pitching coach for the Rangers, went out there as well to protect Simeon or at least to give Ramon De Jesus an earful. He got run, and then Bochy came out and got it too. That's a hat trick, isn't it? <laughs> I thought you said the hockey season was done. <laughs> I mean, Marcus Simeon is one of the nicest guys. You very rarely see him get upset. We should throw our hats out there. there. That's Logan O'Hoppy on the iPad. He's going, yeah, he went. Yeah. He's a catcher. What's the problem? It's like every pitcher says the same thing. Oh, yeah, he went. So, I don't know who the Rangers have left to manage. You know, Tony Beasley was the interim manager last year. After Texas made a managerial change when Chris Whitworth got fired in August. So maybe Tony Beasley will manage, or maybe the bench coach Donnie Ecker will be the manager here. They've got a couple of options, I guess. Will Venable is quote unquote the associate manager, so maybe he'll be the, the manager here. Either way, Maddox has been thrown out, Bochi has been thrown out, Simeon has been thrown out. There's a new pitcher, Brock Burke, and Ezekiel Duran has gone out to play second base. And you also need some insurance here. Top of the order coming up. And it's not comfortable for the Angels right now, even with all those ejections, because it is still a one-run game against this high-powered Rangers offense as Taylor Ward leads off the eighth inning. So if Duran goes in the exact spot for Marcus Simeon, you might not have to see him at all. Swing the bat potentially if you can get six up, six down. The way he's swung the bat, the series in all season long, that'd be pretty good. It's Ezekiel Duran now at second base in Simeon's spot. So if that spot does come up, Duran would take that at bat. He could hit too. And there's no shortage of bats on this Rangers roster. You know, they were going to pinch hit him for Smith originally. And they still have Josh Young on the bench too. Young didn't start tonight. And Mitch Garver, who we've seen. Get plenty of at bats in this series. Two balls, two strikes on Taylor Ward leading off here in the eighth. Valdi ended up with nine strikeouts, five in his last two innings. He's on the losing end of this one as the Angels have a one run lead in the eighth. And Ward dumps one towards shallow left center field. That's going to get down. Base hit. Two hits tonight for Taylor Ward brings up Shohei who has just belted the ball throughout this series. It's our T-Mobile coverage cam where he's crushed some baseballs the other way the whole series. 459 453 to left center and then a 388 down the left field line. Huge home runs, big moment home runs for Shohei Otani. Here's a high fly ball, left center field. He's done it again. Shohei gives the Angels a 5 2 lead. <laughs> Uncle, <laughs> how did he hit the ball that far again? Same spot. Just as we show that power, Shohei Otani. Unbelievable. He is not real. <laughs> I mean, it is <laughs> remarkable. <laughs> Oh, that only went 443 though, but 109.4. Yes, Shohei. He ties Alonzo for the major league lead. As Mike Trout lines one to the glove of Seeger, reaches out to catch that one. Another home run off a of lefty. That's upstairs. Looked like a slider cutter. Shelly goes, yeah, no problem. I pitched today. I won't have quite the same bat flip. I'll just drop the bat. 
And it's a good thing he has such broad shoulders because he has really carried this lineup for the last couple of weeks. He has been just on an unbelievable tear. On base three times, two walks, and a two run home run. He has a 12 game hitting streak. Remember, Rendon can't really swing the bat right now. <laughs> this is remarkable. 12 game hitting streak. He's hit close to 500. He has 13 extra base hits during the streak. He has now 16 RBIs. And he's just knocking the daylights out of the ball. You know, Rendon can't swing the bat. Doesn't mean that the pitch has to be off the plate, though, to be called a strike. Anthony Rendon strikes out looking there. And two outs after the Otani home run. 443 feet. His fourth home run of the series. <laughs> it's wow. To go every one of them in the other way. He's already had the hardest exit velocity on the home run the other way in Statcast era. And then he goes there the day he pitched through 99 pitches and still crushed the ball that far. It's his seventh home run during this hitting streak. Since May 30th, he has hit 10 home runs. <laughs> With a 426 average. It's in a 15 game span. Wall strikes out. And Shohei Otani launches another. 443 feet of insurance. And it's 5 2 Angels. Killed a Roundup was a substantial factor in causing cancer. You may be entitled to substantial compensation. If you or someone you love used Roundup and were diagnosed with cancer, call the number on your screen now. Don't wait. There may be time deadlines to file a claim. Call 800-892-7300. That's 800-892-7300. Let's talk about ED. As you get a little older, things tend to work a little differently. I felt shame, embarrassment, guilt. Like something had been knocked out from underneath me. What Hims does is says, hey look, don't worry about it. We got this part covered, 100% online. The whole process was very discreet. It made me feel like I'm a rock star. This product has changed my life. When it kicked in, I said, yeah, I'm back. I remember this feeling. Get started today at 4 Today we participate in the Home Run Challenge. Every home run in this game raises money for prostate cancer research. So far, over $509,000 have been raised. You can make a pledge by going online to pcf.org forward slash home run challenge. Well, good thing Shohei exists for that challenge because he keeps obliterating the ball. There's a Soriano, the rookie, on the mound here in the bottom of the eighth with a three-run cushion now. Well, he's got an electric fastball working. 97 on that with some running action. Still, all four of the home runs in this series for Shelly have gone the other way. Two walks today. You could tell he's seen the ball exceptionally well. He pitched six innings. He had a good outing tonight on yeah. the mound. He worked 
through six. He allowed two runs. He's in line to win this game. There's strike three call to Adolis Garcia. And go on with that electric fastball. Soriano's got a really good curveball. Angels trying to win three out of four in this series, and Shohei Otani has had an enormous role in all of it, and especially tonight. I mean, wow. <laughs> it's like he's willing the team to jump on his back, and you mentioned those broad shoulders. That's a strong young man. Soriano with a fastball blown by Jonah Heim. He is now tied for the major league lead at home runs. He has the third most strikeouts in all of baseball as a pitcher. Check swing. One ball, two strikes on Jonah Hahn. Ball and he fell backhand sets his feet throws out Heim two up two down. Rudy Tavares will bat after a quick word from Hyundai. It's your journey own every mile in the Hyundai Tucson with America's best warranty. Tavares 0 for 3. The first pitch to the Tavares that have him in that backdoor breaking ball from Shohei now Soriano. Knows how quick he is on that fastball in. Still this in shock at that home run by Shohei. You have to be, you feel that you have to be somewhat worn out throwing 99 pitches. This whole place is in stunned silence yes. right now. No, the people on social media want to say Aaron Judge is better. There is nothing bad to say about Aaron Judge. He is an, an unbelievable ball player, but he doesn't pitch. He doesn't pitch once a week. And it shows he's every bit of the, the slugger. Leody Tavares strikes out. Jose Soriano, a 1 2 3, bottom of the eighth. Angels in control as we head to the ninth. The power of baseball goes beyond the field. Together, together, together. Think baseball. There's something that's been missing in the debate. Think analysis. Now it goes into his contract year. What do you do with this guy? Think advanced metrics. The new rules are having an impact, and I'll bottom line it. Think MLB Now, the show for the thinking fan, only on MLB Network. Two Angels as we get to the ninth inning. Mickey Moniak gave the Angels the lead in the seventh. They'll lead off here. 
As Joe Marlowe gets the ball in the top of the ninth inning. Jose Soriano, by the way, a one, two, three, eighth inning. He breezed right through. How good does he look? Three home runs tonight for the Angel. Chad Wallach, Mickey Moniak, and that starting pitcher, Shohei Otani. <laughs> Soriano's allowed one hit in his first seven big league innings with 10 strikeouts. Pretty good. Joe Barlow enters the game with a mound visit. That's nice. I think he just wanted to make sure you understood that how good he was so far. <laughs> Going back to her, the key for the game today. And uh, right on cue, always a friend. I'll tell you what, Shohei Otani, a lot of friends on this team. Mickey Moniak says so many glowing things about how much he's learned about the game of baseball from his good friend, Shohei Otani's homer for him tonight. Same thing with Chad Wallach behind the plate. Zach Neto says a lot of great things about Shohei, but Shohei, wow, what a performance tonight. He's a friend to everyone. Well, certainly anyone that's got a big red A on their clothing with a halo around it. Or baseball fans in general, sports fans in general. Brings a lot of eyes to this game that may not ordinarily be looking. Anytime Shohei does something special like this, you know, the whole world seems to be watching. And literally. Oh, what kind of impact. He's Moniak unreal. gets another hit himself. That's three hits for Moniak tonight. Big turnaround first, but he'll stay there. I was reading about this kid the other day on MLB.com who's 12 years old, lives in Japan. He's ambidextrous, so he's trying to be, he wants to grow up to be an ambidextrous version of Shohei Otani. It's like you see the limits, and Shohei blasts right through them, so there are no limits anymore. And everyone should be inspired by that. Yes. Yeah, maybe this kid will be an ambidextrous two-way player, a three-way player, as they are calling him already in Japan. Chad Wallach pops it up. I mean, what he has done swinging the bat in this series alone, the home runs he's hit against left-handed pitching. And as far as he's hit the, the left-handed pitching, I mean, I'm, I'm just looking up. Our view is perfect for where. I mean, these, these are over the Angels' bullpen three times in this series for Shohei the other way. Angels, three more outs. They'll have three wins out of four against the Texas Rangers. Shohei's been a huge reason for it. The Rangers had won six straight series until they lost two out of three to the Rays in their previous series. They have not lost a series against a division opponent yet this season. That could happen tonight. Well, you go back to that check swing for Marcus Simeon, he's called out on. Three Rangers were thrown out, and then Shohei Otani hits a two-run home run. The Angels, some breathing room, a three-run lead here now. This ball hit well to left center off the bat of Velasquez, sends Tavares back. He has room for the second out. Statcast brings you the four home runs Shohei Otani has hit in this series. They have all been to the left of center field. Opposite field homers, all of them, and three of them with some serious launch and long range. 107 miles per hour exit velocity or more. Yeah, he just said, oh, you know what? Kind of like that baseball bat. You know, his pitching has been a little bit uneven lately. But he was good tonight. Yeah, he shook off a 30 pitch first inning. Remember going back to what we said this be unpredictable in the game and he was today. He threw a lot more four seam fastballs. Started off a lot of cutters then he started mixing in his curveball and sweeper. Under to left off the bat of Renifo that will end the inning. We'll head to the bottom of the ninth. Carlos Estevez will look for another save.
You want highlights? Quick Pitch has you covered. Things are heating up. Packing all today's biggest plays into one lightning-fast hour. Oh, my goodness! What a play! Every game. Goal! Every night. Swing and a miss! Every highlight that makes the headlines. Are you kidding me? We live today. Preview tomorrow. The quickest way to catch up on all the action? We've got you covered. On Quick Pitch. Late nights and early mornings. Only on MLB Network. Sunday, MLB Network celebrates Juneteenth. Join Harold Reynolds, Mookie Betts, and some of the game's biggest names for a look at the business of baseball through the eyes of African-American players. MLB Tonight, a conversation Sunday at 7 Eastern on MLB Network. I'm a Watch games and coverage all day, every day, your way on MLB Network. Their benefit tonight throughout this series. Chad Wallach got it going in the second. A home run off Nathan Evaldi to straightaway center field. All the homers tonight have been hit a long way. Mickey Moniak well over 400 feet as well. As he gave the Angels the lead in the seventh. And then Shohei with the showstopper. 443 feet in the eighth. His fourth home run of the series. All to the opposite field. The Angels three outs away from a series win in Texas. That's a little over 1,200 feet of home runs in the three of them. All three over 400 feet started with Chad Wallach with his dead center. There's Carlos Estevez who can tie an Angels record tonight. Lee Smith, the Hall of Famer, was 19 out of 19 to begin the 1995 season. And if Estevez nails this one down, he will join Lee Smith as the only Angels to ever go 19 for 19 to start a year. Bottom of the order due up for Texas. As Robbie Grossman leads things off. Grossman, Jankowski, Smith do up. Young is on the bench for Texas. We could see him. Remember, Simeon's been thrown out of the game. So Ezekiel Duran is in that number one spot in the order. No important first out here. Carlos Estevez behind 2-0. Attack the strike zone here. Grossman swinging fouls it off. at a strike. Estevez has typically been around the plate this season. And there's a strike at the top of the zone. Ooh. Break on that one. I'm going to give Chad Wall the credit for that one. Brought it down just subtle enough to get the call. That's a full count. And there's ball four. That one not close. And Estevez does walk the leadoff man here in the bottom of the ninth. 2023 Scott's MLB All Star ballot is now open. No vote for Shohei and Mike Trout and whoever else you want daily at MLB.com slash vote to decide who represents your Angels this summer. Estevez should be there too. In Seattle next month, trying to lock this one down it would be an important game for the Angels to win. There's a strike to Jankowski. The Angels trying to take three out of four against the first place team in their division. Extremely difficult to get a double play against Jankowski, but you'll just play for outs here in the ninth. And all one strike. Instead, as used quite a bit. Last two outs on Tuesday was off yesterday third time pitching for him in this series. Two balls one strike on Jankowski. So I want to give this team any life they got a lot of power and a quick conversation out there. Infield coming in along with Chad Waller. We get Harry in a hurry. With this lineup turned back to Seeger, and that's when things can get tight.
Josh Young is on deck. Go bat for Josh Smith. So far, seven of the ten pitches out of the strike zone for Carlos Estevez. Jankowski swinging, fouls one off. Well, he might take all the way there. Back to back walks. Here comes Matt Wise. Bill Nevin gets on the phone speaking to a couple of things. One, the importance of this game. And two, that, you know, Estevez has been used quite a bit. It's been very durable. He's been very good. And he's been also very used. And you know, if he's fatigued, you can't blame him. And the Angels need to find three outs here in the bottom of the ninth inning to lock this one down. There's Jacob Webb. Getting ready quickly in the Angels bullpen. Young is only hit into one double play. We'll take a double play to avoid Seeger now. Josh Young is the pinch hitter for Josh Smith. He has plenty of power. He's aiming some pitches right now. Young fouls that one, and it's one ball, one strike. Still life on the fastball, 98. all over the place with that slider two balls one strike on young the crowd tonight most of them have stuck around to the finish now trying to rev up the Rangers here in the bottom of the ninth the Angels trying to win this series They've hit three home runs tonight Shohei's hit four in this series the Angels offense has done enough to hand the ball to the closer with the lead in the bottom of the ninth. A three run lead for now. As Young swings through a high fastball, it's two and two. Looks like the most consistent pitch for Carlos Estevez is his fastball right now. You know he has a good changeup to go along with his slider. Ezekiel Duran is on deck. He replaced Simeon, who was ejected. After that is Corey Seeger. Young digs back in after calling time. On two and two. And foul. Back inside with another fastball. And ready, the 18th pitch of the inning coming up from Estevez. And another foul ball. Grossman walked. Jankowski walked. A couple of the lighter hitters in the Ranger lineup were given free passes. That makes it a whole lot more difficult. There's a strikeout in the game for Young, though.
All three. Webb is ready in the Angels' bullpen. If Estevez loses another, he might come out of this game. On three and two, Young takes ball four. Bases loaded full of walks. And we'll see if Phil Nevin makes the move. Here he comes. Now Stevez is gassed. And Jacob Webb will try to work around a bases loaded, nobody out jam here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Got something to say about the game? I want to hear that. Don't just talk about it. Get caught up so we can talk about it on the show. Intentional talk about it. I think this is when opportunity arises. Join the conversation with Intentional Talk on MLB Network. We're watching. We're watching. The power of baseball goes beyond the field. What an exciting time. Together. 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 Watch games and coverage all day, every day, your way on MLB Network. Spectacular show here. Six innings on the mound, allowed just two runs. On top of that, extending his inning streak to 12 games with another long home run. His 22nd of the year, tying him with the Mets. Pete Alonso for the major league lead in that category. Just amazing numbers during that 12 game hit streak for Shohei. Jacob Webb on the mound to try to give the Angels a series win here in Arlington. Ezekiel Duran's first at bat tonight. He replaced Marcus Simeon, who was ejected after being called out on a check swing that didn't look like he went around on. Simeon was thrown out. So was Bruce Bochy and Mike Maddox. Check swing there. And Duran has been called for a strike by Ramon De Jesus. Duran barking down. And he has to be careful because the Rangers don't want to lose him. Texas still has Mitch Garver and Sam Hufford, two other catchers on the bench. He definitely went on that one. Yeah, that was more of a strike. And now one ball, one strike. Webb has three major league saves, two as a rookie for the Braves in 2019. He had one in 2021. And Steves, fatigued, walked the bases loaded. Duran with a pop up. First base side. Looks like it's playable. Jared Walsh makes the catch. One out. Huge out. Jacob Webb. one but it's hard to breathe with Corey Seager coming to the plate all one Seager who tonight is hitless has been outrageously good since coming off the IL he has 36 RBIs in 36 games 
All two. Nathaniel Lowe is on deck. These are the big boys in the Rangers lineup. Seeger, Lowe, Garcia. Webb's going to gap to go into the Lions' mouth to pull out a series win. There's a strike. Very patient so far for Seeger in this event. Trying to pick one out that he likes from Webb, who has gotten one out, needs two more. Angels trying to take three out of four in the series. Seeger with a vicious cut, and it's two balls, two strikes. He went after him with a fastball, hard of the plate, upper part of the strike zone, though, at 94. Seeger has enormous power. He tried to use it right there. Webb is back to even. Now it's two balls and two strikes on Seeger. Little blooper up the middle. It is caught by Velasquez. Two outs. Ran that fastball in. A gutsy pitch. Especially with the bases loaded. And the handle of the bat. Now Nathaniel Lowe, you have to respect his power, especially to the opposite field. He has doubled and singled tonight. He's the number three hitter in this Texas lineup. Ball one from Webb. Garcia's on deck. Lowe was a silver slugger winner last year. He hasn't been quite as good this year, but he can still rake. Two outs, bases loaded in the bottom of the ninth. Swing and a miss. Stavis looking on. He's been so good for his bullpen mates. Now they're trying to pick him up in the bottom of the ninth. Ball two to Nathaniel Lowe. Great teams need a full roster to get the job done. The Angels trying to gain some ground in the American League West by winning this series. They need one more out. Ball three to Nathaniel Lowe, Adolis Garcia, the Rangers RBI leader, is on deck. There have been three walks in this inning to load the bases. Webb has come in and gotten two outs. That's a strike. Now the ultimate scenario in a baseball game. Bases loaded, two outs, bottom of the ninth, three-run game, and a full count. Webb against Lowe with the game on the bases. It's three and two. Just missed. Ball four. Oh, that's a pretty good pitch. A little bit off the plate, though. Yeah, just a little off the plate. So close. Now it's Garcia. The Rangers RBI leader has 55 on the year. Swing and a miss. Almost looked like Chad Wallach was trying to call a timeout there. And he'll take the strike instead. Garcia has an RBI double and a run score tonight. He struck out his last time. Tying run now at second base. Swing and a foul back. It's 0-2. And you're ready to that one more strike. Go back to that slider. Yeah, you got to get him to chase. Got to trust it right now. You got to trust it. Webb's ahead, 0 and 2. Fouled it back. It was the slider. The sweeper was up, though. Well, you made that one mistake. Now you readjust and make the best pitch of the night right here for Jacob Webb. Jacob Webb trying to rescue Estevez and the Angels in the bottom of the ninth. Four walks have scored a run. A base hit would be devastating to the Angels. Trying to secure a series win. 
Swing and a miss, strike three. Say goodnight to the Rangers. The Angels win the series. Jacob Webb works out of a bases loaded jam. He strikes out Adolis Garcia, and the Halos take three out of four. They beat Texas five to three. What a game. Talking to him today, Wayne, he said, you know what? Phil Nevin has a lot of confidence in him. He loves his teammates, the best teammates he's ever had. He won a world championship with the Braves. He said, this team believes in each other, comes in with the bases loaded. What a job by Jacob Webb. By the way, what a job by that man right there, Shohei Otani. Wow, this series. Wow. The gas upstairs, Webb. He goes Spider-Man, the Webb. Gets it by him upstairs, effective pitch throughout the series, a high fastball. I'd love that emotion. He says he's having more fun than he's ever had in the game of baseball. Now you gotta give Phil, Phil Nevin some credit there, Gooby, because Carlos Estevez has been tired. He's been used a lot. He walked the bases loaded. Some managers would have pushed their closer to keep yep. going, but he knew where Estevez was right now, and there he is with Estevez saying, you know what, I needed to pull you there. I needed to bail you out because you've bailed us out so many times. That was a great move to bring Jacob Webb exactly. in the game. We were looking at each other, and I thought Jacob Webb was outstanding to bring him in there. Jacob Webb gets the final three outs, the strikeout of Adolis Garcia to end, and he's standing by with Erica Weston. Wayne, thanks very much. Jacob, what a game for you guys. What a way to close this out, though. Not quite pitching in the World Series. Bases loaded, though. Nobody out coming in for Carlos Estevez. How were you and Chad Wallach able to navigate the heart of their lineup to get out of that jam? I just keep attacking these guys, you know. Go to my strengths when I need to. Um, yeah, just coming in and shut it down. I know you spoke with Gooby before the game today about the confidence that this team has shown in you, particularly from Phil Nevin. How much has that played a part in what you've been able to do here recently coming out of the pen? It's been awesome. Uh, you know, having faith from your manager and all the coaching staff behind you, it's it's a great feeling. You know, it, it makes you want to do your job even more in all the tough situations. It's it's awesome. Uh, this is a great team. We got a great crew here and we're going we're gonna to go a long way. We can see the chemistry building with this team right now playing so well. You take three of four from the toughest team in your division. How much of this series were you guys using it as a measuring stick? Uh, I mean, we're not measured from, you know, series to series, but it, I think we're doing a great job. We're playing great baseball right now, and that, that's all that matters. You know, you keep, keep getting wins, keep getting, the, you know, the W every night, and that's it. Last one for you, Jacob. There were so many big moments in this series, but particularly from Shohei Otani putting his the team on his back with the home runs and, of course, doing what he does on the mound. I don't know how to describe it's him. How can you? It's unbelievable. That guy is a special, special baseball player. We couldn't say it any better than that. Thanks for the time. Nice job tonight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. All right, Erica, thank you very much. Jacob Woo, Webb gets the last three outs. Angels grab Angels was there to see it all. Yes, Chad Wallach got a roll with a home run. Great defense, a good swing tonight, too, by Jared Walsh. Shohei with the W, Shohei with the bomb. Mickey Moniak with three, including a home run. What a series win for the Halos here. Angels tonight. win 5-3, and Texas Angels Live postgame is next.